Hello everyone, and welcome to another stream. Today's a hat day. I'm having an epically bad hair day, so today the hat stays on. <laughs> I hope you're all doing uh, well on this Saturday evening, afternoon, whatever it happens to be near you. Uh, today I thought it'd be fun to sort of do uh, two things at once. I wanted to cover uh, conspiracy theorists, but also sovereign citizens, which are kind of conspiracy theorists in their own way, but they're a subset that believes a very specific group of beliefs. So I thought we'd check that out. Oh wow, Krizia, thank you for gifting 10 tier 1 subs to the community. I appreciate that. Um, MMO Addicted with 100 bits says, hope everyone is having a better day than me. I'm at a very low mood point and I am in a constant state of panic since I woke up. So yeah, hope y'all are doing better. I don't know what to do with myself, so I may... <laughs> jump out or in, I don't know. I'm sorry you're feeling that way. Hopefully, uh, listening to some of this could, uh, keep your mind off it and just know we're all here for you. Everyone give MMO Addicted a digital hug, okay? Bumble Homestead, thank you for a hundred bits. <laughs> I did pull up Danzy, but I, I'm not gonna torture you guys with Danzy today. I just thought it'd be funny to open up with a screen of Danzy. <laughs> I don't wanna I've probably overplayed the joke enough already that it's not funny anymore, so I gotta I gotta there's like a recharge time on the Danzy joke, you know? <laughs> if I do it every time, it just gets really annoying. And I know it's already annoying, but I mean really annoying. We're at 86% of the level 3 hype train already. Wowzers. <sighs> I just wish the YouTube volume thing had was, like, less sensitive, you know what I mean? I feel like if I get it to move at all, it moves, like, halfway across the thing. Um, RTK142 says, bits for hype, and yay for first day of spring. Also, Hannah, it was never funny. I <laughs> grant it was funny to you. Well, that's what matters. My entertainment is what matters, Okay. You're all here for my entertainment, not the other way around. Do you think that I'm here to entertain you? You should have figured out that wasn't the case when I was never entertaining. <laughs> uh, be very careful, John with 50 bits says, who's Danzy? Oh, oh, oh. Danzy is um, a lovely woman who puts on, I'm not gonna play it again just because <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Does Trump songs, and they're just lovely. Get Deformed, thank you for converting from a Prime Gaming sub to a Tier 1. Appreciate it. Strong Bully for Wi-Fi says, Just stepped away from my wife's baby shower. Everyone's been tested negative for COVID, but my anxiety is still through the roof right now. Uh, frack and anxiety and frack COVID. Thanks for always entertaining me, Hannah. Uh, well, I hope you're all uh, safe. Uh, Baja had to go get a COVID test yesterday because, uh, a lab mate of hers, uh, was exposed to someone with COVID. The test came back negative, for the record. Purple Nickel with 100 bits says, greetings and salutations, everyone. Daddy Sume says, uh, sub size queens. Daddy has arrived. Hello, Sume. Uh, she Haku Jin with 1,000 bits says, please no, Danzy, have mercy. I'm not going to do Danzy. <laughs> Don't worry. However, I might do some vegan teacher. Now, vegan teacher is not a conspiracy theorist, nor is she a sovereign citizen, but I'm just really interested. <laughs> so we might do some of that. <sighs> Me. 
three, two, one, sing. Eating animals is wrong, McDonald's. Hurting animals is wrong, McDonald's. Share this song and change your entire menu to be vegan from now on. I need to start some other kind of show that fits more people like Vegan Teacher in. I don't know what it would be called. It, it just needs to be general, like, 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 kind of out there characters on the internet, you know? But not necessarily a specific thing. That way I can fit everyone in this category into it. I don't know. Kind of like Jeff Holiday's Wingnut Roundup. That's relatively general. Wingnut, you know? Wacko Wednesday. See, I'm worried calling them something like Wacko in, in the title will make Twitch kind of be like, eh, you can't be calling people that. <laughs> I'm not sure, though. Um... Neural Alchemist with 100 bits says, Woo, catching a live stream. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. MMO Addicted with uh, 5,000 bits. Wow, says, Play us Danzy, Hannah. A dirge for my mood. Oh, no. That's a 5,000-bit message. I, I think I have to do what MMO Addicted says. So, that's the law, if you don't know. If someone gives you 5,000 bits, you have to do whatever they say. Um, Hold on. So blame, blame MMO Addicted for this one, guys, okay? <laughs> this is not my fault. This is not my fault. Hi, this is the sixth Trump cover song that Dancy Seems Big Singing Channel presents, Wrecking Ball. Please share, like, uh, and subscribe. Crunchy Watch <laughs> with 20 bits. You have it already. It's called Captain Cringe. I guess that's true. They cheat, they lie, our hearts being hang. We were tricked. Uh, TYY, thank you for subscribing for three months. We fight, we fell, and we're there track. Our Lock Moses says, damn it, no I have less than 5,000 bits. Stone Don't Crowbell, thanks for gifting us some. They can walk away. We will always want Trump. We can't live a life. Running for our lives, we will always want Trump. He came in like a wrecking ball. He never hit so hard in this world. Uh, Flame Eight Comic Art, thanks for following. I wonder how many followers I've legitimately lost from the Danzy thing, from playing Danzy. It's got to be at least 25, right? Yes. We put integrity high up in the sky, and now it's coming down. They slowly turn it, let us down, and now it's crushed to the ground. Don't you ever say they can walk away, we will always want Trump. We can live a life running for our lives, we will always want Trump. He came in like a wrecking ball, he never hit so hard in this world. Um, and me lost, thanks for subscribing for three months. Three months, but I may need to unsub to afford a new headset. That's fine, I understand. We never meant to start a war. We just want to cut legal rules. And instead of blocking views, they should have let observers in. We never meant to start a war. We just want to cut legal rules. They should have let observers in. Don't you ever say they can't walk away. We will always want Trump. He came in like a wrecking ball. He never hit so hard as well. Okay, um, I can't. I can't. I can't. I've, I reached my limit on Danzy. 
I do have limits, believe it or not. Though I don't show them often. MMO Addicted with 100 Bits says, What did everyone expect? I'm Polish. We're like reverse succubi. The only thing that brings us energy is the suffering of others. Am I Polish? <laughs> Freaking out 99. Thanks for subscribing with seven months. Ooh, almost time for a sub baby. Probably Lannister with 25 Bits says, Hi Hannah, I found this today. That is great. Short palate cleanser. I... <laughs> I literally sent this to Baja earlier because I thought it was so funny. Um, Devolio11 with 50 bits says, Stanzies unite. <laughs> Logarth says, uh, is this woman related to William Hung? That's an old reference, but it checks out. Winter O'Hare says, I wish I could have asked her how she chooses the songs for the Trump versions. Um, and RDK142 says, Stanna's our long national nightmare is over. <laughs> Uh, Jake had dueling grifters for Danzy. Did he play it? I sent him Danzy, who he didn't know of, and I was like, play this. <laughs> I want people to be annoyed. <laughs> yeah, that's on me. I told him to do that. Did he tell you guys I told I told him to play it? <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. I just want to make sure you guys get your daily dose of Danzy. Danzy, vitamin D. It's necessary, okay? If you don't get your daily dose of Danzy, you're going to get jaundice or something. I don't know. I don't know how nutrients work. You spent 30 subs to force him to stop. Oh, I see. You'll give him 30 sub subs to make Danzy stop, but me, no. <laughs> Um, maybe all Danzy subs are Polish. Logarth with 20 bits and just a disappointed face. <laughs> You'll contract Ligma. I get it. <laughs> Did I see Terrence Williams losing his mind over Biden's stairfall? I saw it existed. I'm so tired of Terrence, though. <laughs> he owes you lunch. He made so much money that night. Yeah. Yeah, people like to gift him shit. People like to gift me shit, too, which I appreciate. <laughs> Maybe next month, if I'm nice, I'll do my best. Uh, Profane Priestess says, Hannah, my friend, bought me some lingerie. Is this what gender euphoria is? If you're happy, then yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, Quiet185, thank you for gifting a sub to Iron Q-Bolt. Hmm... <sighs> Have I seen the Biden chroma key conspiracies? I have. <laughs> uh, funny. <laughs> this is technically supposed to be a cleanser for later, but I want to watch this prior to... Uh, wait, is this going to get... Oh, Saban is not a fan of using their clips, but this is probably fine. This is uh, someone watching Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin. It's pretty good. Evandris, thanks for subscribing with a 10-month streak. Look, man's cleared the Zord in one jump. He really wanted to beat the ass. Look how he break in. Uh, on site. This is the definition of on site. I don't know if y'all have ever heard that phrase. If you're black, you know what I'm talking about. But on site, this is what that means. Nigga, as soon as I see you on the street, and guess who catches the hand first? Everybody look crazy. The Yellow Ranger, she ain't, she ain't know what she was walking herself into. Look at this shit. Hands. Merry Christmas. You get hands for Christmas. Fucked up the whole squad, son. Put them out their own car. How you put somebody out their own whip so you can beat their ass in the daylight? I, he said, I need space to beat y'all ass. Look at this shit. Michael Jackson. Feet. Hands. Look at this bitch slap. Bitch. Look at that. That's, come on, dog. This nigga, this nigga hit her with the pimp slap. He wound up for that shit. Bitch. Come on, son. Feet. What kind of disrespectful combination? <laughs> uh, I want to watch Power Rangers with that guy. Quiet185, thank you for gifting a sub. The Green Ranger is evil. I mean, for a while. During Green with Evil, he's evil. But then after the five-part Green with Evil thing... He turns good, but then later, Rita Repulsa on her moon base 
gets the green candle and lights it, and when the candle is out of wax, the Green Ranger will lose his powers, which he does, but he returns later as the White Ranger with Saba, the talking tiger sword, so it's fine. <sighs> And then the command center gets destroyed and they turn into the Zeo Rangers with the power of the Zeo Crystal. And Tommy becomes the Red Ranger. And then Turbo Power Rangers happens for stupid reasons because Turbo Power Ranger sucks. Uh, and then Tommy leaves. And then he comes back years later after he's become a paleontologist or something. And he becomes the Black Dino Ranger. I think that's all the Tommy Oliver stuff I know. MMO Addicted with 100 Bits says, I feel a bit better now. I shall now proceed to soak my wrinkled old body in rejuvenating bath of essential oils, salts, and the blood of my enemies. I'll be jumping out of chat, but may lurk. Love y'all. I'm glad you're feeling a little better. Daddy Sume says, my mistake. I thought the green was always evil, and when he became good, he became the White Ranger. Nope. Uh, understandable mistake, though, if you haven't watched Power Rangers since you were like eight. I just, I've watched it as an adult because I suck. Uh, freaking out 99 with 100 bits says, um, uh, range, oh, rangers in space. I think that's what it sounded like. Yeah. They had those cool surfboards. Okay. What are we going to watch first? That's a good question. Let's do some vegan teacher stuff. So, for those who missed my previous streams on the vegan teacher, the vegan teacher is an ex-teacher who is vegan. Of course, there's nothing wrong with being vegan. It's a, it's a great choice, both for health and, and ethics for people, if that's what they choose to do. Uh, my girlfriend's a vegan. Uh, I, I eat plenty of her vegan cooking, and it's good. Being vegan, completely fine. I have absolutely nothing against veganism, obviously. Don't like the vegan teacher, though, because she's condescending and makes everything about her and how great she is. So let's take a look at some of her content. Oh my god. <laughs> Someone posts, My friend literally died from malnutrition because of your posts. Wrong version of your. I tried to get him to meet but he was committed and died because of you obviously fake post but okay your friend died trying to be vegan oh i feel terrible oh my god what did he eat what did he eat that killed him was it a banana a carrot was it broccoli oh god maybe it was dates and figs <laughs> the po okay Look, I think the post is just someone trolling her, but, like, <laughs> if it was true, this would be the rudest thing to do. The post said the friend died of malnutrition, like they weren't getting their macronutrients in in their new vegan diet. So it's completely disingenuous to be like, did a banana kill them? Well, no, that's, that's not what they said happened. They didn't say they were poisoned. They said they died of malnutrition. Which, again, I think probably didn't happen. Is it soy milk or tofu? Oh my god, he died, eh? And you tried really, really hard to make him eat meat, yeah? Shit. But did you try hard enough? Like, did you take him and just, like, force him down and just say, Man, you gotta eat this dead pig! You gotta eat this bacon to save your life! Did you do that? You know? Did you, did you make him eat a sausage? Did you, like, shove a chicken wing down his throat? I don't know if you tried hard enough, man. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Towing24 says, Yeet this racist chud. Get to the sovereign citizens. And Towing24 says, I got $20 that says she wrote this post with a sock account. <laughs> Eating animals is wrong, Trisha Paytas. Hurting animals is wrong, Trisha Paytas. Share this song and change your entire life to be vegan from now on. What percentage of the shirts in her closet have something to do with veganism on them? Over under 45%. What do you guys think? 
Because it seems like half the time she's on camera, it's a shirt that says something about being vegan. Strumbly for Wi-Fi says, did you know you can die of malnutrition from eating just lean meat? It's called rabbit starvation. Neat. Uh, Daddy Sume says 100%. I sang that song, and I put it on TikTok, and it has over 21 million views. Now, the reason I want to tell you about it, Trisha, is because I saw a video recently of you eating McDonald's in your car with, I guess, your boyfriend, your mom, and maybe it was your sister. I don't know. Now, honestly, oh, this is the thing she'll do, by the way. She'll just, like, see other popular TikTok creators or whoever uh youtubers whatever and then just like call them out for not being vegan just randomly just random ones because this is a it's a clout chasey thing again it's not as important that she convinces in my opinion it feels like it's not as important that she actually convinces people to be vegan it's important that other people see her attempting to turn people vegan that's the vibe I get from all of this is that it's about like self-aggrandizement and like I'm so much better than you that's just the vibe I get. Uh, Haku Jin says, how can someone be so aggressively passive aggressive? I don't really know you. I just saw you flash on my TikTok. But I saw a few things and a few things alarm me. Now, before I became a school teacher, I was working as a registered nurse for 25 years. So I was looking at you and what you're eating. So she's your average 2012 YouTuber. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I think you already know that the way you're eating is not healthy, but that's not my concern right now. My concern is the animals and what you are promoting on your channel. I want you to be vegan from now on, Trisha. Listen, you know the life that you're living right now, all this fame and all this free stuff that you get. It's shallow. It's just superficial. It's just going to come all crashing down one day and then where are you gonna be <laughs> this is a good way to get your audience to respect you and listen to what you have to say by saying your entire life is a lie you're a shallow bitch and you're gonna die poor <laughs> now stop eating meat tucker white says oh so sh oh, no, i've already read that one towing 24 says real susan sarandon glenn greenwald horseshoe left energy daddy sume with a uh, link says ha 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 <laughs> oh no um pur purple nickel with 100 bits says this is giving me vibes of when uh sorsha called out pewdiepie for not being vegan also you missed some of my bits i'll go back i apologize <clears throat> uh all that ever comes to mind is when i hear about power rangers is uh brandon rogers video i'm not familiar i don't think what you need to do, Trisha, is look deep inside of you and see where do you want to be as a human being down the road. Disney World. I want to be in Disney World. I haven't been to a theme park in a long time. Uh, Shmoop B, thanks for subscribing with four months, says woohoo, love what you do. Ooh, that rhymed. Tucker White with 20 bits says, Christ, I feel like I'm back in church. Three months, six months, a year. Okay, and even think further ahead. What I want to sneak into Disney World and live in the on the boat in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. The ship, not like the ride car, but the fake pirate ship you go by at the beginning. I'm going to live on the pirate ship. What do you want them to say about you after you've died? What do you want them to have written down on your tombstone or... That's a good question. What do I want people to remember about me when I die? You guys are the people who are going to remember me along with my loved ones in real life, obviously. But I think a lot of you will uh, hopefully at least think of me in passing or something someday down the road. 50 years from now, maybe think like, oh yeah, remember that streamer who wore the hats? I remember that. Uh, here's what I want you to remember. Uh... Oh, I should have come up with some sage advice or something. Uh, pants or prisons? Don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, dab on them haters. Those are the those are the three things. <laughs> Freaking out ninety nine says on my tombstone, I want dead. No big surprise. 
have people say at your funeral that she was this popular star. How about we put one of those uh, QR codes on my tombstone that <laughs> when you scan it, it sends you to a Danzy video. <laughs> Uh, she Hakujin says she Hakujin had a huge dong. <laughs> Star who got into a lot of drama, or I don't think it'd be pretty tough to chroma key this background because her hair is also a very similar shade. Standing next to this, a lot of it's because it's like bouncing back onto her hair. But would you like them to be able to say something about who you are inside once you found out what happened to the animals? Now, if you ever see this video, you are going to be responsible from now on to do your part. You have so many followers. And when you sit there and do a commercial for McDonald's sitting in a car, I can't even begin to tell you the harm that that does. Eating McDonald's in your car during a video isn't an ad for McDonald's. Necessarily, it could be if it's sponsored content. But people eat food in their car and do vlogs and stuff all the time. Sometimes people do, like, mukbang videos or whatever, which I think are kind of gross, but uh, people do them. People like them. They get views. It's fine. And I don't think this lady convinced that many people to eat McDonald's, considering McDonald's is, like, the number one... <laughs> what? Well, how to phrase this? Out of any single entity, McDonald's feeds the most people on Earth per day. I think they're fine. Um, be very careful, John with 25 bits says, my tombstone is going to read, oh, I should have come up with some sage advice or something. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, Stromboli for Wi-Fi says, tombstone reads, he once caught a fish this big, wide arms under. Uh, <laughs> Daddy Sume says, I'll think of you, Hannah, always. I love you. And then it's a picture of Helga Pataki's Arnold trying from Hey Arnold. Tucker White says, while we're on Disney World, you think anyone who's Jeff Bezos rich could just call up either Bob Iger or Bob Chappick and arrange for a keep the distinguishing plebs out day? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I looked this up once because I had a similar question. I basically looked up what is the uh, uh, typical average day's profit for Disney World or a Disney World park. So, in theory, my thought was, if it just was like a monetary thing where it's like, I will pay you exactly or maybe even over exactly what you typically make on a day, but your overhead will be lower because it's only me and my family in the park. It's a lot of money. <laughs> so, I don't know. I feel like they probably wouldn't just because the opportunity cost of that isn't great, considering it would make people look pretty poorly on the park and every time a kid goes to disney world you're sort of training that kid to want to come back to disney world if not this year or next year or five years then someday with their kids so you miss out on a whole day of thousands and thousands of kids experiencing you know disney world you're losing potential customers and stuff it's a little weird purple nickel with 100 bits says i wouldn't want a tombstone i want to do that thing where they mix your ashes and soil and plant a tree in it I want to be a weeping willow tree. Oh, that's nice. You are basically telling all of your followers, young people, old people, that it is okay to eat these horrible, horrible, disgusting products that come from so much of Besides, they already do things at Disney where you can like, if you're a really rich person and you want to go to Disney World, you can pay for special packages where if you're like a celebrity or a huge CEO or whatever, um, they'll, they'll just assign you a cast member. Disney's employees are called cast members. They'll assign you a cast member to like take you in the underground tunnels between the rides and they'll just put you to the front of the line and then you don't have to deal with any of the, <laughs> I think that's not very fun personally because a lot of the fun I think of Disney World and other theme parks is sort of being in them around other people when there isn't COVID of course. Um, taking in the atmosphere and all the shops and, and the landscaping and the theming. I feel like you lose out on a lot of the experience if you just go underground tunnel to ride to ride, but I'm not a wealthy, famous person, so. Bardlock Moses says, I ran into Michael Jackson with like 20 security around him in Disney World when I was a kid. Ooh, that must have been a while ago. 
violent. Disney makes nineteen point eight six million dollars a day. Yeah, pretty good. I want you to watch a movie, okay? The movie is called Dominion Movement, and how you find it is you go to WatchDominion.com. That's it. It's all one word. WatchDominion.com. WatchDominion.com. Type it. I'm obviously not going to be able to play any of this. Because it's almost certainly going to have animal abuse, but let me take a look. Let me skim through just on my own to see what this is all about. I assume it's a bit like, uh... Oh gosh, what's the name of the Joaquin Phoenix one? Earthlings, I think? Oh, it's immediate. It is immediately bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Some female pigs are kept on to replace the sows in the breeding cycle, carefully selected for... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, I've said this before, and I'll uh, say it again here for the posterity's sake. Uh, I don't agree with factory farming. I think it's shitty, and I recognize that the animals are treated fucking terribly. So I agree. Fit in? WatchDominion.com. I'm saying it many times because I really want you to memorize it. I want you to go there, and I want you to... Is it just factory farm, farm gore porn? Yeah watch the whole thing i want you to bring a big box. it was uh, they were going through uh, um you probably don't want me to describe it box of kleenex because it'll probably make you cry unless you have a heart of stone and tucker white says translation should be read as valley girl like oh l m g stacy what the fuck are you thinking eating me you're ruining the feng shui of our movement chakra i really don't think that you do now what this movie is going to show you is that there's a whole life out there that you have no idea about and it has to do with how much suffering goes on that you don't see. Billions of animals are suffering. It, we, it is not what you think. Everybody thinks, oh I know what goes on in factory farms, oh I know it's terrible. But you don't. You don't. I mean no offense I but that's I, as shocking as it still is to see that kind of like terrible conditions for animals i that's basically what i expected it to be i've seen them before it sucks i thought i knew and that movie broke me that and one before called earthlings earthlings remember those two earthlings you can watch it on netflix or dominion movement which you can get to watchdominion.com i want you to watch those videos and I want you to come out of there ready to be a new person. Trisha, this kind of life with these fake fingernails and all of this crap that you get, just junk, these purses with the fur stuff on them or whatever, it's just bullshit. That is such a shallow life. You're not put on this earth to do that. You gotta transform completely. This is not about your body image. Okay, I'm not talking about even your own health right now, but everything will change once you become vegan. Because being vegan is not about us. It's about others who have no voice. Once you start figuring out what we do in these industries to the chickens, the cows and the pigs, the horrific way that they are treated, once that gets you here in your heart and in your head, Trisha, you will be changed forever. And you will be motivated to change your fans. I mean, everything will change. It will be like a domino effect. When you change, your followers will change. Everybody will stop going to McDonald's. Everybody will start caring about the animals. And this is how we will change the world for the better. The oceans need to be cleaned up. We need to get the garbage out of there that the poor whales are, are being forced to eat. We have to clean the skies, the air. We need to reduce our greenhouse gases. 
All of these things have to do with the way that we treat the environment, with the packaging that comes from places like McDonald's, everything that you just eat and just throw away after, and all of the suffering that comes from these animals and how terrible it is. Didn't McDonald's change their wrapping recently? Hold on. I'm just curious if it was purely aesthetic or if it was any sort of like it's more biodegradable or something. Just curious. Because it would be nice if it was. Because I imagine a lot of their fucking, you know, burger wrappers and stuff <laughs> and just end up in shitty places or whatever. <sighs> Nah, it must just have been uh, aesthetic change. Oh god, that's not what they look like. But the wrapping did change recently around me. I don't know. She Hakujin with 100 bits says, Speaking of Dominion, I'm a contractor for a power company called Dominion, and I had more than one person angrily ask about voting machines when it was election season. Oh, people are dumb. Daddy Sume says she's the worst type of vegan, like the, like the, <laughs> uh, I don't want to say that. I sort of agree, though. Freaking Out 99 says, when I learned about factory farming in school, they showed us this parody educational animated film called The Meatrix. <laughs> oh, God. Shadow Witch says, end his suffering in the most vile and horrible, grotesque way possible after hearing Hannah use that Valley Girl accent and hopes the asteroid to end humanity is on its way. All your fault, Hannah. Oh, yeah, hi. I hope you're good. <laughs> Oh my god, guys, are you saying that you don't like when I use this totally cool Valley Girl accent? What if I just wanted to be like Kimberly, the pink Power Ranger, guys? It's for the environment. We are cutting down forests to plant crops, to feed animals that we breed into existence to begin with. Everybody says things like, well, if we stop eating the animals, they will overpopulate. But no. Because we breed them, we force them to be there in the first place. That's not an argument I've typically heard against factory farming. I think most people know that those animals get bred by human beings, but okay. It's, it's unnatural. Do you know that there's only 4% of animals that are living in the wild right now? And the rest are all in farms? They are being mass produced and lined up as if they are in a concentration camp. And that's exactly what it is. It's like nobody learned anything from World War II. We just... Oh, again, I don't like when she compares non-human animals to the, the Holocaust. Not great. Uh, human non-dancer, thank you for following. And Lenka635, thank you for following. Literally took these places and we gashed these pigs. It is horrific. Every time I open up my Instagram, do you know what I see? It's filled with animal rights activists. And I see the pain and the slaughter and the undercover footage, things that I'm not allowed to put on TikTok and things that people must see because it's the only way to get them to care. Trisha, I'm asking you to please watch that documentary. <laughs> Daddy Sume says, yeah, lady, go say that to a Jewish person and see how long you go unbunched. But not just that. To tell your audience to watch it. But not just that. I want you to start being vegan from now on, little by little, baby steps, okay? I'm not asking you to do anything drastic, but just to start talking in your videos about what you're eating. I want you to say things like this. That vegan teacher talked to me, and it's made me think about what's on my plate. And now every time I look at these animals, these dead animals, these suffering animals, and I wonder if she's ever done a video on Nikocado Avocado, considering he used to be vegan. And now he's like the opposite of vegan. <laughs> Especially I want you to think about the dairy industry where we rape these poor mother cows. And when they have their babies, we take them away and we kill the baby boys. And I really I don't like that comparison either. Krizia says she's been very dishonest with that 4% number because it's only mammals. And by biomass, domesticated animals are bred specifically for size. Yeah. We turn them into veal. And the mothers are put back into the cycle of violence of being enslaved for their entire lives, which are short, because as soon as they are spent, they call it, unable to give as much milk, they're murdered at about the age of four, whereas normally they could live over 20. So, Trisha, I ask you again, 
please look at what's on your plate. I want you to make videos and I want you to talk. If you don't want to mention me, that's fine. You can just mention veganism in general because I know you made fun of vegans in your video on the car, in the car there about how they're pushy or something. It was definitely a derogatory term. But I'm not angry with you or anything because I honestly don't know you at all and I have no idea how much you know about veganism. And I'm going to assume that you know nothing and you really don't understand what's going on with the animals. And in that case, you're innocent right now, Trisha. If you don't know, if you've never seen the footage and really have no connection, okay, but now that you've seen this video of me talking, you, talking to you and asking you to go and watch Dominion.com, now you have a responsibility to do it. And all of your followers should watch it too. And all of those people out there, maybe you don't care about the animals at all. And maybe you only care about Trisha's health, okay? At this point, that's fine. Convince her to stop eating and promoting these animal products and we will get there slowly. A little bit of time. Wind Chanter says, I made it. What are we doing today? Just looking at weirdos. So, the homework, go to watch. To How do you not be nervous while when streaming? Um, that's a good question. I've been talking at cameras since like 2012. So, I just got used to it over time, but I was certainly nervous at the beginning. Um, especially when it came to, like, talking to people live. I started out on YouTube uh, doing pre-recorded stuff, and it didn't start doing live stuff for quite a while. And the stream stuff here on Twitch is quite recent in the last year or so. But I think it's just something you get used to the more you do it. Um, you sort of set a rhythm and a pace for yourself and figure out, like, when it's appropriate to interact with chat, when you should focus on whatever content you're doing. It's just like any other skill. You just get used to it, and the more you do it, the more confident you become at it, and the more confident you become at it, the more confident you become at it. So, uh, basically just doing it is the best way. And you gotta know that it's gonna be rough at, at first, and you're gonna look back, and you're gonna, like, be like, oh, I didn't used to be as good. And that's okay. That's part of the process. Dominion.com. Anybody who has a fan, who is a fan of Trisha's, I want you to tag her in this. Make sure that she watches it because we have to change the world for the next generation. The planet is falling apart. So many, we are losing so many species right now. And the pollution. And everybody is lost in this shallowness of, of fighting on, on YouTube about nothing. Drama that's ridiculous. We need to get in here. We need good people on earth who are going to care beyond themselves. And Trisha, I'm nominating you as one of those people. Okay? You can be in this for the long haul and continue to be famous, but... Her rhetorical technique is so bad. It's so bad. It's like she tries to... And I understand the, the intent to try and guilt someone and then... And then tell them basically i'm putting a responsibility on you and that's supposed to convince them but especially when you go about it in this way it does the opposite and makes people resent the point you're trying to make and it's not even that like like a lot of the things she's saying are absolutely true factory farming is repugnant and the treatment of the animals is terrible so much of the time but when she goes about it this way it just doesn't work Logarth of 20 bits says, as a cow furry, I still eat meat, including beef, but I try and eat local meat, which here in New England is actually a uh, burgeoning market. That's cool. For a good reason. Minimize all the stuff in your house. Get rid of things. Start to care about what's important in life. I think you can do it. I'm rooting for you. Take care. And this, I hope, is your first day of your journey. Be vegan from now on. See you later. I, I think part of her problem is that when she was a teacher, I assume she taught pretty young kids, and she still uses that same cadence and tone and everything that she probably used with, like, the little kids. And when you're addressing adults or young adults, in the case of some of her videos, it just comes off as incredibly condescending, and no one likes to be condescended to. Wind Chanter with 20 bits says... Yep, that's it, everyone. Pack up the planet. We're done. Make sure we salt the earth and burn the forest. <laughs> uh, bitter old ass broad, thanks for gifting two subs to the community. Hmm. What else? What else? What else? Carrot and hummus wrap? Yes, please. 
after this, we'll we'll get on to some other stuff, conspiracies and sovereign citizen stuff. Hey, did you like my new carrots and hummus sweater? Carrots and hummus. They go together like me and my carrots and hummus sweater. Carrots and hummus. They go together. Eating them while wearing it. Nothing could be better. Jump, jump, freeze. Jump, jump, freeze. Ooh, C is for carrots. H is for hummus. No matter what day it is, you won't want to miss eating carrots and hummus in your matching attire. Nothing could ever make you feel any higher. Jump, jump, freeze. Jump, jump, freeze. Ooh, don't worry. Don't worry. It's not a sand tune. The new Parappa the Rappa game looks like shit. Dip, 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 dip it in. It will be the climax of your day. You will see whether you do it in the kitchen or on a Zamboni. Jump, jump, freeze. Jump, jump, freeze. Ooh, dance to this rap with your favorite hockey fans while dying. I feel like watching the vegan teacher after you guys asked me to stop playing Danzy is a serious monkey paw situation. Please stop playing Danzy. Okay, <laughs> there's wish number one. Up your skates or sitting in the stands. Being vegan is awesome. It's healthy and it's fun. Just Google vegan athletes to see how it's done. Jump, jump, freeze. Jump, jump, freeze. Ooh, carrots and hummus. They go together like me and my carrots and hummus sweater. Carrots and hummus. They go together, eating them while wearing it. Nothing could be better. I have seen her jump, racist jump, video, freeze. yes. Jump, jump, freeze. Bitter old ass broad yeah. says, was she nominating Trisha go vegan, Paytas? I'm not sure. I don't know who health, that is. Wind Changer says, no, I demand more dancy. No more dancy for the day. Players and rappers <laughs> that you know. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, that's, that's hummus. Okay, that's vegan teacher. We, we'll, we'll probably cover her again on a cringe stream or something, but I'm, I'm at my limit for her for now. Rainbow NB, thank you for gifting a sub. A new rap to play at the beginning of the stream. Yeah. Fair use. In the United States, copyright law allows for the fair use of copyrighted material under certain limited circumstances without the prior permission from the owner. Under the law, determinations of fair use take into account the purpose of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the work used in relation to the work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market for the copyrighted work. Other jurisdictions may have similar copyright provisions protecting fair use or fair dealing. If you are uncertain as to whether a specific use qualifies as a fair use, you should consult a qualified copyright attorney. No. Artists sit down for the Hold on, does this get more more audible? Yeah, it's a little hard to understand. For, for, for okay, stuff like this. <laughs> That's just outside the courtroom. <laughs> And you're going to be able to get... Hey guys. Look, I know a lot of you don't want to argue with the police or stand on your rights with the police. Because you believe that if you tell them everything... I've seen this guy before on Tinfoil Tuesday. He's also a uh, QAnon conspiracy theorist. ...that they want to hear. Give them everything that they ask for. They're going to just walk along. And you're going to be able to get out of the situation faster. I can't tell you, you can't be wronger. If a police officer comes up to you and he's investigating you, he's investigating you. That's the only reason he's asking questions. He believes that he can give you a ticket or he can take you to jail. One of the two. I mean, if you're breaking laws or statutes, yeah, he, he can. He or she can. Winchanter says, who would win in a nice off, Bob Ross or Mr. Rogers? Mr. Rogers, for sure. Now, if he's coming up... I don't have anything against Bob Ross, but Mr. Rogers was, like, the king of being nice. ...to talk to you, even a ticket. An average ticket's going to be between $200 and $300 by the time you do court costs, da-da-da-da-da. You know, even some cities 
charge you for a public defender. Okay, even some cities do that. But the point of the matter is this, unless you make $1,000 an hour, it's worth the 20 minutes to stand on your rights. Keep in mind, courts have ruled that if you're being investigated under reasonable suspicion, they can only use a reasonable amount of time to determine if you've committed a crime or not. Okay, okay but if you're like resisting questioning or resisting arrest, all of a sudden a reasonable amount of time expands because you're not cooperating with their investigation. You're escalating the situation and therefore extending the amount of time that they can reasonably take dealing with you. <laughs> And a reasonable amount of time has been based approximately 20 minutes. And if you guys look at all these videos, they'll show the whole video. Very rare are they longer than 20 minutes. I've seen Sovereign Citizen things go on for an hour or more. It just depends on the situation. Usually, and here's the thing that this guy isn't really mentioning. At a certain point when you are, like, like uh, what's the word again? I, I'm blanking. Uh, when you impede their investigation into the traffic stop or whatever, if you're refusing to comply with them, sure, some of them take about 20 minutes, but you know what happens at the end of that 20 minutes? And we've seen this a lot on the show. They smash your window and arrest you for not complying. <laughs> so sure, run down that clock. You're going to just end up with property damage that you're on the hook for. If they're standing on their rights. Now, if they start talking... Well, yeah, I was just coming down the street and, yeah, just up around the corner. Now he's got more things to investigate. You're giving him things to look at, which is going to take more time. So I want you to look at this video. I'm going to pop in and out. The man stood on his rights, and you can tell the police wanted to give him a ticket. Even at the end, they go, his windows are tinted. Let's see if he gets in the car and takes off. So they can give him a ticket. <laughs> they... Police do not like wasting their time, okay? Use that time to your advantage. So take a look at the video, okay? And guys, don't forget, subscribe. I've got some plans. Once I get this up to about 20,000 uh, subscribers, I'm going to be doing some activist. And I want you... One sec, I want to see if this guy's channel still exists. Injury. Oh, this is probably a channel I should save on my... <laughs> um, Sovereign Citizens. Be on the ticket. Driver license. Okay. Identification license. card. Free man liberty. <laughs> I love when people give sources so I can start putting these people on my list so I can look at myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does this guy still post on this channel? Three months ago? Okay. That'll go... No. Alright, sit down, please, sir. You want to be involved. Even if you don't want to be involved, I would subscribe just to see what I'm going to do. Because you're going to be a bit surprised. But anyways, let's get to the video. So I've asked them several times uh, if I'm under arrest. They say I'm not under arrest. I miss you too, Baja. But uh, they're saying that uh, they need information from me so they know whether or not a crime has occurred. And your officer, Jackson, your badge number is 2098. You are McCartney, number 21. McCartney, number 21. His badge number is 21. And this is Roberts. His badge number is 2137. So they maintain that some kind of a crime has been committed here. And uh, I'm just trying to find out exactly what it is. Okay. So please don't walk behind me, okay? Can you just grab your ID and then we can, we can get this finished up, Sir, okay? I need to know what your reasonable, articulable okay. suspicion I, is. Hey, hey, sir, because you sir, have absolutely sir, no have, evidence. Let's have animal control tell you Can what I explain? Okay. Every person having care and custody over a dog more than 15 days in the county of Orange shall procure that license on the day it becomes due. That's Orange County Code 4. Okay, so the guy is like walking a dog or something that isn't licensed? Okay. 
they can ticket him for that or whatever the law happens to be, if that makes sense. For 170. I will full screen Lupine if she comes in. And so I'm asking you to prove that your dog is licensed to me, and you're not Well, you're presuming that it's my dog. Okay. All you're right. presuming but you it's have, my dog. No, I, I, I'm presuming you have care and custody over the dog. And I'm asking you to prove to me how long you've had the dog in your custody. I don't have to answer your questions. Okay. Well, you, then, do? I don't... you do? You <laughs> do. You do. They're in the middle of an investigation. I don't have to answer your questions. Then we're done. That's the bottom line. Then we're done. I do not we're have to answer your questions. We're, we're done. We can't talk. We can't have a dialogue if I, I can't ask questions. Okay, let me just check something. What's the dog's name? Would you answer that? I just want to know if I'm legally required to answer your questions. Well, you're supposed to have a dog license. Am I legally to... required to answer your questions? That's you're what I'm asking. To it's not really a point to ask the cop that. Cops are allowed to lie, so they can tell you yes. So we've been here about 15 <laughs> Even if it wasn't. minutes, and the dog is still in the car because they have not decided whether or not the dog is in any kind of trouble or any kind of danger. So they got four guys here investigating what I don't know. So I, I have no information so, on file for your... So uh, do you have a sir. signed statement from the person that called to report this crime? Okay, sir. I, do you I, have a I verifiable need, I just need your ID, complaint? Sir. I, I want to know ID. if you have a verifiable complaint. Why don't you record the vomit on the seat that the dog regurgitated? So why are you not doing anything? You want to get a picture of that? Sure. That, that's the reason for our concern. Okay. That's what started it, but because of the temperature, I, I concluded that the dog was in no threat that way. But uh, right. because of your uh, because of your uh, correspondence with us, I, I, I kind of felt like maybe you, you had a, a chip on your shoulder or something. I thought, well, I wonder if he has a dog license. So let's see. So I thought. Maybe <laughs> All right, this cop seems like a dick. He basically just admitted, you know, I was just checking to make sure your dog was all right in the car and it's not hot enough out, but then you were, uh, you were disrespectful for me, so now I'm searching for a reason to fuck with you. <laughs> Sovereign citizens are wrong, but also fuck this guy. Maybe you, you would, you would, maybe... Sorry, you're saying I've committed compliant. the crime of having a no. ship, chip on my shoulder? No, Is that what no, you're saying? No, no, you, no, you, you... I, I would think that maybe if you're so antagonistic that maybe you probably wouldn't, wouldn't even license your dog. If four you of you guys don't. here, four of you guys here, and I'm the antagonistic one, right? Four of you. Well, you have and I'm the antagonist. So where is your dog licensed? Because I'm showing my I don't license. answer questions. No, you just... Okay, so do you have your ID? I don't answer questions. I want to know why I'm under arrest. That's why I want to know. I repeatedly told you you're not under arrest. Well, if I'm not under arrest and so I have not been right reported now, right as a suspect, you're, you're, am I a suspect right. in a crime? Uh, well, you're being detained to investigate the okay. crime, yes. So, so I'm so, a suspect in a crime, right? Which is, which okay, is the well, violation I'm invoking, of the Orange County Code. When I'm, I'm invoking my right to silence, then. Okay, I'm, well, the, I'm gonna be silent. I, haven't, I haven't arrested you. My so God-given right to okay. silence. You just said that I'm a suspect in a crime and I do not have no. to talk to you. No, I do not. You, you don't have that right because I have not Mirandized you. And I'm not, you're not in custody. I have the right to remain you. silent at any time. But you do have to provide your identification. That's if I've committed a crime. You said I haven't committed so a crime. So you have to provide your identification. So let's but get you your ID said, going. You said I okay, have not committed a crime. Going. You said I have not. You're not under not, arrest. Right. So, let, so let's get So you why am I providing my ID if I'm not under arrest? That's what I want to know. So we can determine whether or not you have a dog license. I can run your name too. Because it's not showing. Of it's course you want to run my name. Won't, won't my name be uh, held against me? This name that you're talking about, isn't that going to be held against me too? <laughs> no? Yeah, help me get, get me in jail faster, right? In all likelihood, it's going to get you out of here much, much, much quicker. Why? Because it doesn't seem to me like anybody's going anywhere right now. So you guys want to waste your time? You waste your time all you want. How about you just give me your address? I'll just take your address. What's the dog's name? I'll take your name, and I'll send you a license bill, and we'll, we'll all go our separate A place. license bill? Yeah, you should pay your What's dog What's a license bill? You need that explained to you? So you mean, you mean to say that having a dog is 
unlawful. Is that what you're saying? It's illegal to have a dog. He already explained to you what the code was. Yeah. So, so when you have care, oh, no. for over it's, a, it's days. living in a country where everything's illegal. Everything. Everything's illegal here. Everything. Unless you pay government for, to get a license to make it legal. Right. You just enforce them. Okay, I'm skipping ahead. I assume the cops are just going to give up at a certain point. For myself, that man just saved three hundred dollars. Beautifully done. It's Jones. We on the ticket. I'll be back in one sec. Sorry, driver's I wanted to get okay. a cheese snack. What's your name and badge number, sir, first sir, of all? Name and badge number? Sir. Please? Your okay, you're a public servant. Okay, so your name your is Jones? Who you Jones? 66 96. Now, why am I getting pulled over for a second? You violated the no left hand turn sign. I violated it. Driver's I violated it. I did not even see it. I stopped. I stopped. Driver's license. You must have a U-turn. You know that you broke the law, too. Your driver's license. I'm only gonna say this one more time. Your driver's license. And then what's gonna happen, sir? Okay. I'm asking you a well, question, sir. Because the thing is, is you're saying that I violated. I stopped. Sir, I stopped. I stopped, sir. Look, but I'm asking you. I stopped. Did I not stop? Did you not see that? I'm asking you for your driver's license. Okay. So what's okay? Tell me the infrastructure, please. One more time, just so I can get online, please. What's the uh, what's the fracture? What's the uh, the pr this is plate 15-5A4-105. I'm getting my stuff out on the... Uh, Phil Twin asks, uh, why do sovereign citizens seem to share the same mindset? It's like they have a checklist of what to say and what to do. Because uh, many of them literally do. There are people who... um. There are people who teach people these sovereign citizen techniques like for a living as a grift and then that stuff spreads online and that's how you end up with this stuff he didn't pull you over for failure to stop thank you anonymous gifter for gifting a sub don't tell me to stop smelling the cheese that's one of the joys of cheese is smelling it before you eat it I understand this stuff man but hold on a second Send these people, man. Okay, so here's my insurance, That's right? And this is insurance. this is my uh, sure identification license. card. And you never repeated your name, sir. Your insurance and your driver license. My name I, is written Jones, and you see the badge number six six nine six. Thank you very much for your politeness, sir. I do appreciate that. And what's the infraction one more time? Driver's license. Please just tell me the infraction. Then we get this online. Okay. Basketball. It is here. Basketball. It is right Basketball. here. I got everything right here, so I'm not gonna deny everything you have. Look, everything's here, right? So I'm gonna give you driver's license, which is right here, and I got you with. Uh, and if you need something else, I got the uh, registration. So I don't know you don't want to tell me what's going on, so I will get. I will talk with you people later on. Here's this. So right now, my so it's like an. It's recording, right? 
Yes, yeah, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Unlawful. Purple Nickel stop, says, God damn it, Hannah. The one point. time you talk about cheese and we're not even playing bingo. <laughs> Police checkpoint. For what reason? Uh -huh. Hello, it's a DUI checkpoint. Do you have your driver's license on you, sir? Here you go, sir. What's that? Sorry, that's really question. Mm -hmm. Cops should start printing out counter pamphlets. Hey, so when a sovereign what? citizen hands them a packet, they can hey, hand Sam the one back that's like, this is all bullshit. Sam Stop reading people's opinions about the law hey, on sir. the internet. If you need this, you can take that with it, too. Uh, that's your identification card? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a driver's license? That explain everything right there, sir. Okay. Can I put this in park? Uh, we're just going to have you pull in there, and then you go I, and talk to a sergeant inside there. I really don't want to pull in anywhere. Yeah, we're okay. trying to go um, home. He's saying that explains why he doesn't need a driver's license, even though he's driving on the California Highway. Okay. Um, he's not wanting to pull in there either. Okay. So I just want you to read the affidavit, sir. Yeah. I know that. What's your first name? My name's Quinn, sir. Okay. We will talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about this, but we can't hold up the line of 40, so we're going to have to talk I, to you in there. I, I mean, I, okay. I comprehend that, but it's my right to travel and, and, and I'm molested. You. Now, you're handing me this to read, and I will read it as soon as we pull out of traffic. No, 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 it's I'm a, a nurse. It's, it's okay. We don't have to say anything. It's weird. Everything's being recorded. I'll comply and, okay. and pull right here. You, I just want you to read the yeah, affidavit. I'm going to keep it. Yes, sir. Pull in right there next to those stalls where everyone's at. Yes, sir. All right. This is bullshit. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. They're fine. They can, let, it, let Sarge read the affidavit. This I want to know what the affidavit bullshit. says. Yeah, I'm not happy with any of this. Okay, let's okay, read it. Really it's so disgusting. <laughs> oh, this, this is I hate yeah, watching yeah, other you know. people do it, and then I do it. I'm such a hypocrite. I'm not stepping just done. Okay. No, I'm not. Hey, I'll just, I just handed Sarge the affidavit for him to read. I don't, I, I don't have to step out of the vehicle or anything. I'm just, I'm gonna turn it up. I'll do that. Uh, all right. We are talking to okay. him. All right. Can we run him? Can somebody run him? Yes, I can do that. For it's twelve five hundred. Okay. Yes. How we doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. Where, where do you live? Right there on that. Right there on the. Everything's on the affidavit, sir. Okay. Give me a second. No problem. I'll read it. No, <laughs> no issues, man. No issues. No worries. I gotta, I gotta bring you out of here so they can continue. No, I'm. In you see, I'm complying. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. That um, explains everything. I don't, I don't even have to answer any questions. I'm be late for work. And this is your car, Quinn. The owner's sitting right next to me, sir. You'll be late for work. No, you don't have to say anything, Norman. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> Probably don't carpool with the uh, sovereign citizens, then. Um, you don't have to say anything. Just, 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 just let him read, read the affidavit. Charlie 14. You just have the other that ID just for yourself? Say again, sir? You just have that ID just for your own, your own needs? Um... Yeah, that just, Sarah, that answers everything. I, I, I shouldn't even have to answer any more questions at this point. I just want to, I just want to travel on on public roads and highways unmolested and get on about my day. I appreciate you guys. I, I appreciate you guys out of protecting us from DUIs, though. Yep, because neither of us. <laughs> yeah, that's just stupid. People that All right, drive no, no, stupid. It's okay. No, it wasn't a crime. I'm reading the important ones. It's eight and nine. Any These action by weak, police yes. and the, any actions involving a citation, right? Everything's in the affidavit. They should make wheat thins, but out of like corn meal. So it'll be like corn thins. Is that what a corn chip is? Did I just reinvent corn chips? What's up with the why, 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 on my, why is why, he doing that? Why he doesn't have comes, permission to yeah, do don't, anything don't have, to my vehicle. Right off. But he doesn't have any right no, to No, no, no. He doesn't have permission to do no anything way. to my vehicle. 
No, it's not, not a business. at all. Can be quiet. Private contraband. Yeah, right my there. private contraband. Not right exactly. To do anything. Yeah, so he's not allowed to even do that. Can you tell? It just looks different to me. Uh, yeah, it's a newer one. Old minor. They all had the right to mark the car like they finna tow no. anything. Mm -mm. The car ain't getting towed, they didn't nope. let nothing happen. Yep, exactly. The car ain't getting towed. Does she have a license? The owner of the vehicle? Sir, we shouldn't even have to answer any questions. I can't, I don't answer no, questions. No, 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 let me, let me say this. Let me, let me just explain it's this. Hold on. It ain't about impounded. No I law. Don't want impounded. I know, me neither, sir, but no law was being broken. We, no, no emergency, no inter party. We're, 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 we're traveling along public roads and highways. You need to have a driver's license. How hard is this to understand? Highways unmolested. It shouldn't be any reason for, for, for anything right. to get impounded. This, this, is, this is a checkpoint for driver's license, unlicensed drivers, driving under influence. Oh my goodness Okay, your gracious. license comes back. Is it non-issued? I don't. Expired. I don't. I wonder I don't if any see. of these licensing checkpoints have started p popping up more because of sovereign citizens. Like, I know it's also a DUI checkpoint which I understand, but like, they're also just checking for people's licenses and, I stu and stuff, and I wonder if that's because of sovereign citizens becoming more prominent. You well, had one at one time. No, but let me, let me state not this. Not required. Hold on, no, 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 let me state this. I can state this peacefully. Um, I'm, not re I'm not required by law to have a driver's license, nor do I have a, uh, um, re a renewed contract with the state of California. Uh, um, USC Title 18, subsection 31, everything's, everything's in that affidavit, states that I do not, the only time I'm required to have a driver's license, which I do not have to state, is, mm -hmm. is only uh, 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 when I'm using public roads and highways for commerce. You have to excuse me because right now I feel like I'm under duress. Yep. And, I'm and, using and, public and, roads. And doesn't matter and, what it's for. If you're using a vehicle on public roadways, you need a license. Which is due to the fact that uh, you guys got checkpoints. You, you, you over here, um, like guns and all that, and no law was being broken. I haven't committed any crime. I haven't done anything unlawful. Yeah, I've never heard of these. It's like a rice cake, but it's corn. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. I'd try it. Did someone make like a pizza on it? Corn thins pizza? <laughs> sure, I'd try this. I need to, we need to no, talk no, to them. No, that, that, that's, that's a notarized affidavit with a right to travel right there. Yeah, it's, it's, everything's law abiding. He's, it's in his hand. Like anything that they do as far as Snatch me out of the car, doing anything to violate my constitutional rights. Okay, hold is, on one second. It's all bad. Three, four. No, no, no. Let them do their job. Because I stated everything on the record. And he didn't even introduce no, himself. No, no, no. He didn't say his name. He didn't say nothing. It's okay. No, let, 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 let them do their job. We're going to see sir? what they're going to do. Are you still on the address on the card, sir? Say again, sir. Are you still on the address on this card? Everything is on every every information I all the information I gave you. That's what I'm asking. Yes, all no. the information is is, is accurate. Okay. Um, and and at this point, I'm not answering any more questions. And what is your name? No one has identified no themselves one, no at one gave all. Me their identity. You, you, they're not typically some officers I've seen in these videos come up and be like, "Hi, I'm officer such and such. How are you today?" Which is nice of them to do, and it would be great if more cops got in the habit of doing that. But um, uh, they don't have to automatically do that that's not like a rule maybe, maybe maybe you could argue it should be and that's fine but it isn't however if you're like hi officer uh you mind if i get your name and badge number i would recommend for pragmatic reasons that you ask politely but they should identify themselves when asked because they're you know working for the state <laughs> Identification. Nobody. Yeah. Michael Taylor. And then the other gentleman that was talking number, to us. Sir? It'll be on the citation. Yo. What's the, what's what's the citation, citation for? for? Uh, mm. Driver a license. No law is being broken. It. I don't need a we license need to it. travel, sir. I'm not a driver. I'm a nope, traveler. We're traveling. Stop. I'm a traveler. I'm not a driver. I don't need a license to travel. I don't need a license to travel, sir. There's, a, there's plenty. There's plenty of Supreme Court cases. What's that, your name? You never on, identify on, themselves. No, no, no. Right. Anonymous so, gifter. Thanks I, for having me. Hold on, so. hold on. Let me say this. They never identify themselves. No I get has. all that. I understand that. But I'm not. I'm not standing under anything that they're saying. I'm not. I'm not giving jurisdiction to, to anything that they're doing. Nope. But I. But I am complying. I would like to say this though. It's my right to travel. 
on public roads and highways. I'm the lesson. I, I'm, I'm, I, listen, I'm not using. I'm not. I'm. I'm not using uh, any of these roads for commerce. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Vehicle papers in that the car. Didn't you say you were trying to get her to work? Sounds like commerce to me. <laughs> I actually saw one of these once, and that's a stretch. I'm just making a joke. But um, I saw one of these once where a guy was on a business call. <laughs> and he's like, I'm on a business call. Also, I'm not using the roads for commerce. God, it seems like you're using it as a mobile office right now, sir. That sounds like commerce to me. Is that an Uber driver? That it's her car? Just yes, Norma, course. Norma, go ahead and comply and give and give them Jeez, proof. Man. Even 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 know that I don't. We we, we shouldn't I have, have it. Ear no, listen, listen, Norma, stop. We're, we're, I can't drive. We're, we're, Norma, relax. We're, we're under duress right now. You know, we've got mental anguish because you guys are. We're no one's arm, no one's anything. Here. No. Did you pull it out of going to work There you go. Sinus you don't have to do anything else. That's it. That's all right. I said we, so we can show that we, I don't answer any more questions. She don't, we, she don't want to answer any more questions. This is, I mean, this is ridiculous. We have, we haven't, that's, we haven't broken any laws. No law has been broken. I don't know who Norma is. Are you Norma? No, no laws have been broken. I handed you that, right? We're just trying to confirm this insurance. is your car. Yeah, and this is insurance on that car with that same. Okay, uh, I, I would like to see some ID, ma'am, please, if I could, please. She can I have to turn it? Like, oh, yes, man. can you please shut that off? It hurts my eyes. I have a sinus yeah. infection yeah, this, and yeah. um and a well, root canal infection, so please. But see, either either where it don't matter where we was on our way to, we didn't break any laws, there's no reason for you to be stopping us. There's no reason for you guys to be stopping us. We didn't do nothing. Here, here's what our plan is, Quinn. Okay. What's going on, Sarge? Um I, I want you to, to drive away from somebody to travel away travel from, away here. Norma. Okay. Um, and be on your way Correct the cop. And, and be done with that. Okay? Roger that. I understand. Did he think that was a trick? Like did he think he was gonna agree with that statement without qualifying traveling? The cop was gonna be like, ha ha, I got you. You just admitted it's driving. You're under arrest. Stand what you're claiming here. Not even I've run into this. I've run into this several times in my 25 years. Okay. okay. Obviously, there's a conflict between whether people need a California driver's license to drive, or you're claiming that you don't. Well, here's I the thing. No, no, I know. I, I mean, but here's we are going to issue you a citation today. But here, here's here's if my you thing though. To sign the citation. But here's here's my thing though. Here's my thing though. Okay. You can you can you can issue me a citation all you want but all I'm but all I'm saying is is this though I'm not I'm not agreeing I'm not complying I'm not I'm so I'm complying with you because I'm under duress of course but I'm not I'm not uh giving you jurisdiction over me okay uh, or and I'm and I, and I don't understand why you're sitting here giving me a ticket and, and violating my constitutional rights to travel when I didn't commit a crime there's no injured party sir in the state of hold on, hold on, hear me out, hear me out. hold on and there's no injured party and there's no emergency for one. Two. It's always funny to me when they point out like, okay, I'll obey, but it's because I'm under duress. As if other people don't know how the police work as the arm of the law. Like, imagine if you robbed a bank and walked out of the bank with your cartoon bags of money with dollar signs on them. And the cop is like, stop right there. And you're like, all right, I'll comply, but only because I'm under duress. It's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of the point <laughs> like you don't need to say it it's redundant we're all in the situation we know how this works regardless of what state we're in whether we're in the state of uh california or the state of colorado sarge no 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 state code or no statute which supersedes the united states constitution none Did you say statue and, and there's plenty statute. of supreme court rulings What's that? I don't think so. There's there and there's no supreme there's there's no supreme court. Uh... All right, last piece of cheese before I put these back in the fridge so I don't gorge myself on cheese beyond a reasonable amount today. Mmm, stinky. <laughs> Uh, ruling that the rules in your guys' favor, rules in our favor. There's plenty of Supreme Court rulings that state that uh, you cannot you cannot convert the Stop. right to travel or any constitutional right into a crime. You right there, criminal scum. Nobody breaks the law on my watch. I'm confiscating your stolen goods. Now pay your fine, or it's off to jail. I need to sign up for like, is there like a cheese of the month club? Oh yeah. 
after... Uh, nope, I was, see, I was about to go in for more cheese. Nope. Counting my calories. Gotta, <laughs> gotta keep it reasonable. Damn it. After I move with Baja, I need to start subscribing to a Cheese of the Month Club. I'm gonna be real. Oh my god, they have a chocolate one, too. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with cheese, though. That sounds good. You're, you're literally sitting here, you're turning this into a victimless crime. It's, it's not a crime, it's a This is a, would I try maggot cheese? Do they take the maggots out of it at any point? Or do you eat it with the maggots in it? If the maggots are no longer in the cheese, I would try the cheese. If it's with the maggots, no. No, thank you. Crime! Will I do cheese reviews for you? It would be the most boring review ever. Because I'm not like, <laughs> is there such a thing as a cheese sommelier? I'm not. I'd just be like, this cheese is tangy and buttery and nutty. This one is sharp. This one is mild but creamy. Like, it would be, <laughs> it would be the worst cheese review show. This is a crime this because a you crime. are a corporation. No, no, you not- You eat it maggots and all? No, no thanks. Even that, not, not even that, not, not even that, 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 that they're part of a, a corporate- It's illegal to make? Yeah, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> Entity, but the fact that- Public that, that No, no, you're molesting my rights yes, by detaining me. Servants. Am I under arrest right now? No, right? You're being detained. So, but, 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 but why am I being detained? For, for what? For, we didn't for hit anyone. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, look, look. He's, he's saying, listen, 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 forget all that. Don't say nothing Which else. Is a misdemeanor in California. Let, 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 Norma, will you stop? Wait, stop. I've been listening I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm just trying to finish. Right, I'm trying to get her to just let me finish. But, Quinn, so I understand what you're claiming. Okay. You obviously don't agree with the California DMV, California state traffic laws. I get that. It's not that I don't agree with it, sir. The ticket it, that we're going to issue you go ahead. is going to be for you to take that ticket, go to court, and say, Your Honor, higher than me. Your Honor, I'm a sovereign citizen. I'm not a sovereign claiming, citizen. Well, I'm claiming this. And I'm claiming this. The most high, the most the high God go. gives me my sovereignty, sir. And let the judge <laughs> no, I don't listen. All right, have him show up as a witness in court to let us know. Until then, here's your ticket. Listen, Norma, correct. let her finish. The and most high guy gives my sovereignty. You're correct. The citation is dismissed. Okay, but here for the purposes of our checkpoint, we're going to issue you the citation with a court date for the future. If well, you decide to do whatever you want to with that court date, that's on you. But again, but but, but let me add to the to the video because I know you have, you have a video and I have a video. Okay. And every and everything's being monitored and recorded. Everything. But but, but, but just for the record, okay. responding at superior, notice the agent is notice the principal, sir. It's my right to travel. It's my constitutional right. My right given by the Most High. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. Um. The the, the, con the Constitution. Yeah, Norma's, Norma's valid. The, the, Norma's valid. So uh, she has a valid that's fine. driver's but, uh, license. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. She can drive this away. I don't need Norma, it. Norma, no. will you let me finish? I, I'm just trying to get my finish on the record. I'm trying to it's monologue to the police. It's my constitutional right to travel. Shut up. And, be, and there's plenty of Supreme right. Court I'm cases. Saying, Norma, stop. Right. There's plenty of Supreme Court cases that... Go ahead. There's There's plenty of Supreme Court cases that... that is driving one of the rights we have it is not thank you that rule in my favor on the fact that it's my right to travel they're taking the idea that you have the ability as a united states citizen uh or national whatever you happen to be that if you're in the united states you have the right to travel in the sense that you can like and no this is not like a bill of rights thing where it's like you have the right to travel it's it has to do with other stuff but the idea that you can move unimpeded between the states basically meaning that the the borders between states are negligible you, you you're not going to be stopped at every border like you would between like uh, canada and the united states or mexico and the united states or whatever you can walk from one end of the country to the other you can forest gump it you know and that's fine as long as you don't break the law or anything you you shouldn't be impeded uh they then take this to mean like any means of transportation that I can use also cannot be licensed. So they'll say, well, if I can walk from one end of the country to the other without being impeded, then I have the right to drive, and it's not. They'll call it traveling because they're trying to redefine what the word means. Um, it's very silly.
Comments? Title 18, right. subsection 31, right. 6 and 10. Okay. I'm not. Zalvador196 uh, says Congress has only power over interstate commerce, not individual traveling. Yes. What's interesting, too, is how sort of federal power has expanded over the last century and a half or so as the courts and Congress have sort of started to define basically everything as interstate commerce. So that's how a lot of laws end up getting justified is, oh, it has some element that deals with interstate commerce. And we live in a 21st century society, so basically everything has some level of interstate commerce around it, you know? It's just like, of course, we get parts from different states for different things. We travel around for different purposes. So that's interesting. Not using public roads for commerce. This is and not a commercial situation. I'm not an Uber driver. I'm not a truck driver. It says that you need to be a licensed driver to operate oh, on the roadways. I'm not. I'm not a driver. I'm not an operator. This is not a motor vehicle. It's okay. a private contraband. And you can. What's the court date on that, Mike? November 20th. So November 20th, you can explain all of this to the judge, and he has the power to dismiss. I have no vehicle information on there. Norma, what? is there something with the car on it? What do you mean with the car? Norma, just give him something with the car so we can get going. You can be out of here. Yeah, I'm tired of this. These are wasting my time. Insomnia, pissed off. Norma, don't say another word. Is that it? Don't say another word, please. Here's your information. Your affidavit. Oh, can you get that from me? Sorry about that. Don't say another word, please. Here. All right, Mr. Bass, I need to see this, please. Hold this, please. Straight harassment. No, it's, we're under duress. There's no worries. Straight harassment. This, language. Language. this one? Bullshit. Got gotcha. <laughs> you. All right. I understood well, that we're part. We're no one's driving. Can you I'll please travel. remove that crap off no, my no, car? No, he's, he's let me so I can't. <laughs> it's interesting. I kind of wonder if whatever her name is, Norma, I wonder if she's like a white woman. I, I don't mean to make this about that, but well, they're both wrong, the way he is going about interacting with the police is very different than the way she's interacting with the police. Like he's he's wrong, but he's trying to act, you know, like, like calm and, and commanding in the sense that he's making statements that he believes are a fact, but he, he's trying to maintain sort of, you know, I don't know how to, an even tone, let's say, and not be insulting to the cops. Whereas the lady's like getting indignant and has mad Karen energy. Like she's just, just mad and wants to insult them. So I'm just wondering if she happens to be white and doesn't, fear the cops as much as she probably should <laughs> daddy sumeo 20 bits says so norma has insomnia sinus infection chest infection root canal infection bearded wonder 491 thanks for gifting five subs to the community i appreciate that proud like moses says sounds about white so i can see norma needs to travel away from here where, where? operating a car not mr bass Understand? Yes, understood. World's shadiest sure. wizard. Thanks for following. Not illiterate. Shit. Here to try to her. Not <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this cheese away real quick so I stop nibbling at it. I'm at a reasonable snack quota for the day. <laughs> uh, and then we'll do some conspiracy stuff. Ask I will be right political. back. I'll put on music or something. <laughs> right back.
Okay. <clears throat> so, let's watch another video from Health Family, or sorry, rather, Health Sanctuary Family. I think this guy's name is Peter, or some other name that starts with a P. And <laughs> he is a conspiracy theorist that believes that Donald Trump is secretly still in charge of the military and is going to come back via military coup and reveal that all along Biden wasn't really in charge, it was Trump. Haha, -ha, take that. Hashtag deep state or whatever. It's, it's batshit crazy. And I watched this video earlier and I've never seen a clearer example of cognitive dissonance and bending reality to conform to your belief system than with this guy. It's absolutely wild. So get ready for some, let's just say face palm, shall we? Perspective. I talked about how Donald Trump was commanding the military and to do military actions that save lives and protect Americans, but he's trying to stay under the radar. So he's letting Joe Biden claim credit for these military actions that Joe Biden wants to claim credit for him, even though it makes him look bad in front of the bad guys. <laughs> okay, so to be clear, the claims that he made in previous videos were he believes Trump is in charge of the military. He uh, recognizes the recent Syrian strikes that the U.S. military did. Um... However, he doesn't think Biden did them. He thinks Trump did them. And he thinks Biden is only taking credit because he has to. Otherwise, his cover that he's not really the president or whatever is blown. This is, of course, nonsense. Joe Biden is the president of the United States and has been since January. Makes him look good in front of all the world leaders who are expecting him to be able to control the military. What I didn't have time to share with you guys is that Donald Trump Jr. commented twice on this Syria bombing attack. One was in his CPAC speech where he made a joke, and another comment was a tweet. And both of these comments that Donald Trump Jr. made contradict each other. So the question is, why do they contradict? And how do they relate to this big Syria bombing airstrike story? I'll explain all that. My name is Peter Hanna. This is Peter's political perspective. I mean, Peter's positive perspective. Peter's positive political perspective. Click on the subscription button on the bottom right corner of the screen so you can stay updated on when my videos get posted. So let's dive right into it. So Donald Trump Jr. and his CPAC speech made a joke about how, oh, Biden was quick to go to war in Syria, right? Let me show you that clip. Who would have thought that within 33 days we'd be bombing the Middle East again? I would have. Oh no, guys, come on, the military industrial complex? I'm surprised it took them 33 days. Bear in mind, and again, I'm against the military action in the Middle East too, but Trump also did that. Trump also did that, for the record. <laughs> I guess they waited till the first month, so they couldn't say that was part of the first 30, but. Krizia says Trump and Trump Jr. statements contradict each other because they're dumb. <laughs> Often in this video, uh, Peter's example as to, here's my evidence why this has to be true is because he thinks it's impossible for the Trumps to either lie or just be wrong, and that's his proof. Bardlock Moses says, we haven't stopped bombing since the 90s. Yep. It was only shortly thereafter <clears throat> where we started bombing the Middle East. So in this clip, he... Yes, Trump did assassinate an Iranian general <laughs> with a bomb. He's basically being like, oh, we knew they were warmongers. We knew they would go uh, bomb the Middle East. And he, in other words, he's condemning the attack and impl implying that obviously Biden was the one who ordered it, right? But then he tweeted this. In this tweet... There's mention about how Kamala Harris was not aware of this attack, which is odd. Kamala Harris is on Team Deep State, so why isn't she aware of this attack? That's extremely odd. And then in his tweet, he says, was Joe Biden informed? Which is adding to the mystery. If Kamala Harris... He's making a joke. He's making the right wing... Not even necessarily right wing. He's making the joke that uh, Joe Biden is out of it or has dementia or something which is a common meme that's the joke he's making peter crab the crab thank you for subscribing with two months says i too ship trump in the u.s military just in order the attack and joe biden didn't order attack who did 
So in one statement by Donald Trump Jr., he's saying he's implying Joe Biden ordered the attack and he's condemning it as a bad attack. But then he contradicts himself and says, hey, was Joe Biden informed? Now, some people may interpret this as, oh, this is a joke about Biden's dementia and being like, was he informed of the attack? Maybe not because he just has horrible memory or he's just a puppet and they don't and they control him. So he's not informed of these things. So, so some people may have seen this tweet and be like, oh, Donald Trump Jr., he's a jokester. He's joking about how Biden has can't doesn't have a good memory and he's not informed of this. That's literally the joke he's making, yes. Someone says they found this sticker today out. It says, quitbeingcrazy.com. <laughs> nice. Decisions before they happen. But I don't think this one's a joke. I think... Donald Trump Jr., when he asks questions like this that contradict a previous statement, he's giving Anons a clue for which we can dig, dig, dig. And I digged. And my analysis of this is, so just to read. Everything's a clue when you're desperate to be right in the face of reality, constantly telling you you're wrong. Recap the whole story. When there was an attack on Americans in Iraq, the military was ordered by Trump to retaliate by destroying the terrorists they were located in Syria, destroy them and destroy their weapons. So there was this retaliatory attack, but Trump is trying to stay under the radar, so he's pretending like he didn't order the attack. It's funny too, because this guy is in favor of the Syrian bombing that happened recently, which is something Biden did that I disagree with, but this Trump supporter is agreeing with Biden for doing military action in the Middle East simply because he thinks Trump did it. <laughs> it's very interesting. Stone Corbell says, do you think that the, uh, the Trumps know that they have all these people hanging off their every word, digging through them to try and play this ARG that doesn't exist? They definitely know about the culty people like this, yes. And the Pentagon, which is also controlled by Trump, is also pretending that Biden ordered the attack. And Biden's going along with it and be like, yeah, I ordered the attack because he wants to look like he controls the military. But we have... He's doing a fantastic job by controlling the military. Donald Trump Jr., who is both supporting my theory and debunking my theory at the same time. And this happens before with Team Trump. They'll say contradictory messages. So what's my analysis? Why is Donald Trump Jr. implying that Joe Biden made the attack, and then he's implying Joe Biden didn't make the attack. I'll tell you why. This is him talking in code, and they do this. Donald Trump Jr., General Flynn, Donald, uh, and Donald Trump, they talk in code. Especially when you hear two contradictory statements from the same person, it's important to dig deep. And what I <laughs> You can't just admit that Donald Trump lies and says false statements a lot, so he's going to contradict himself. It has to be that he's sending you secret messages. It's the only option. I think is happening is this. When Donald Trump Jr. says, was Joe Biden informed? Because Kamala's wasn't informed. He's given us a hint that if they're not being informed about military decisions, it's because they're not commanding the military. It's Trump that's commanding the military. So Donald Trump Jr. is confirming that Trump is commanding the, the, the military. He's No, he's not. He's making a joke about Biden's health. That's it. Confirming it. He's saying, guys, Joe Biden wasn't informed of the attack. Neither was Kamala. Guess, guess what that means? He's saying, dig anons. What does that mean? If Joe Biden is not informed of this attack and Kamala wasn't, dig in, look into this Syria attack. And I looked into it and it's a heroic action. No civilians... No innocent civilians died. It was just terrorists that died. It was just terrorists and some weapons that got destroyed in some buildings. And these terrorists attacked us first. So this was a heroic move. We know Biden doesn't do heroic moves. We know Trump does do heroic moves. So when... So his evidence that Trump is in charge of the military is that the military did something that he likes and he thinks it's impossible for Biden to do something that he likes... Therefore, because he liked the thing that happened, it must be that Trump's in charge because he couldn't possibly like something that Biden did. <laughs> it's circular. You can't. I... I... Donald Trump Jr. says Kamala wasn't aware of this. And look, Biden wasn't aware of it either. 
And if you take close look at it, Donald Trump Jr. is saying, guys, pay attention to this attack. You realize it's a heroic action. In my opinion, Donald Trump Jr. is strongly implying that Trump is controlling the military. He's saying, guys, look, if neither the president or the vice president was aware of this attack that was supposedly ordered by the president, that means that my father controls the military. This is my interpretation of it. I think this is further confirmation, yet a third major confirmation from Team Trump that they control the military. So this is very exciting that Donald Trump Jr., in my opinion, is confirming that Trump controls the military by being like, guys, Joe Biden didn't order the attack, Kamala didn't order the attack. If they're not ordering attacks, if they're not calling the shots on the Pentagon military, guess who is? My father. That's how I interpret this. I could be wrong, but that is how I interpret it. But then there's the elephant in the room, right? So if Donald Trump Jr. is hinting to us and implying to us that Trump controls the military and Trump commands... Yeah, to be clear, I guess I didn't think I had to say that, but yeah, the vice president, unless there was a situation where the president is like incapacitated and unable to fulfill their duties, the vice president doesn't have the power to order the military to strike countries and stuff. That's the president's job. The vice president can become the president if something happens to the president, but... Not when they're the vice president. And this attack in Syria, this airstrike, then why is it in Donald Trump Jr.'s CPAC speech, why is he speaking negatively about this attack? Because and it's CPAC and it's his job to rile up the base about hating Joe Biden. That's the entire point. Blaming Biden for it. That kind of contradicts everything I'm saying, right? But remember... They often... The this demonstrable Trump... fact kind of shows that I'm wrong, but I can't figure out why. This conspiracy must go deeper than we thought. Von Tux with 100 bits says, Team Trump, I wonder if this dude was into Twilight Zone back in the day. Often says contradictory things. And for example, in Trump's speech, General Flynn contradicts himself. He's like, Trump has no plan. And then he's like, oh, Trump has a plan. And then Donald Trump Jr. was like, Oh, I mean, Donald Trump was like, I'm going to run in, in 2024. He implied it. And then he implied that he was going to be president sooner. So another contradiction. No. I mean, we see, and again, this is a problem that I've seen this guy have consistently where he will substitute the actual facts at hand with his bizarre overreaching interpretation of events. And then he'll just act like his interpretation is objectively true. So when he says... Well, uh, Donald Trump said he'd run in 2024, but then he said uh, that he'd be president much sooner. No, he didn't. When he says he says he'd be president much sooner, he's referring to a quote at CPAC from Trump's speech where he says, great things are coming very, very soon, which is a general vague platitude that he's giving considering the Republicans lost the election. But Peter interprets that as, Oh, secretly wink wink anons, I'm gonna do a military coup and become president this year. So he then, when he's talking about it, after the fact, substitutes the reality that Trump just said, great things are coming very, very soon, and instead he says, Trump implied he's gonna be president this year, which is absolutely not what happened. It's frustrating. You're contradicting. Uh, the Shadow Witch says, okay, have to ask, so, uh, maybe someone already has, but have you heard about the CGI microphone thing with Biden and how his hand goes through it? I mean, it's a new thing every day with these people, but I look at Trump and I'm like, really? All this weird ass shit and you got to grasp at little shit every day? Maybe it's been discussed here, but absent for a while. Yeah, I, I saw it. Uh, if you look at the second camera angle, you could understand it, but... The minute I saw that video, I was like, oh my god, the conspiracy theorists are going to eat this shit up. <laughs> Thing again, saying Trump controls the military, actually Biden controls the military. So these contradictory statements are hints. And so my analysis of it is this. Donald Trump Jr. is giving a message to both audiences, the non-anons and the anons. Just like Trump was giving in his speech, a message to the anons and the non-anons. The anons are the people who follow politics extremely closely, like me. And the non-anons are the people who support Trump, but don't really dive so deep. Do you think Donald Trump knows what a Pepe is? Like, if I showed him a picture of Pepe and was like, D what is this? Do you think Trump would be like, that's, uh, the, that's, that's uh, the frog. That's Pepe the frog. 
I just want to know if, if Donald Trump knows who Pepe is. I'll die happy if I can figure that out. Someone let me know. Into it. So for the non-anons, the people who aren't really paying a lot of attention into politics, Donald Trump Jr. is saying like, look at Biden, he's a warmonger. Look, the military industrial complex. Because remember, Donald Trump Jr.'s job was to make- He tweeted one in 2016. Well, there you go. Biden look bad. And to say like, oh, he did all these horrible things and he's a warmonger. He successfully makes Biden look bad. Even though this attack was actually heroic action, he's using this heroic action that is that order to make Biden look bad. And honestly, even though it's basically a lie, or it's kind of a lie, it's it's not that far from the truth. Because if Biden controlled the military, the military industrial complex would go to war. So it's... <laughs> Again, the cognitive dissonance is... So wild, because first of all, if what he was saying was true, it absolutely isn't. It's not even internally consistent. But if what he was saying was true, then yes, that would absolutely be a lie. And secondly, he thinks that if Donald Trump does military action in the Middle East by bombing people, it's good. But by definition, if Joe Biden does the same exact action, it's all of a sudden bad. So it's weird on the one hand, him being like, Yes, Trump doing this, which Trump didn't even do it, but he believes Trump did. Trump doing this is good, but it's okay to lie and say Biden did it because if Biden was president, he would do this and it would be bad. But it's okay that Trump is doing it, but if Biden did it, it's bad. And it's okay to lie about it because if Biden was president, he'd definitely do this thing that Trump is currently doing. But it's okay that Trump is doing it, but it's bad if Biden is... Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's circles within circles. He's just like. <laughs> it's stretching the truth. Is Biden a warmonger? Yes. Donald Trump Jr. is telling the truth about that. But this attack in the Middle East was actually ordered by Trump, Donald Trump Jr.'s father. So he's kind of stretching the truth there. But he is, his job is to make everyone think that Biden is a horrible person and he was a warmonger, and which is true. So that's why he says he condemns his attack. He makes a joke about it. Oh, they took so long to attack, huh? Uh, to start a war. I mean, they were so quick to attack, right? So Donald Trump Jr. Razzle Tassel 91, thanks for subscribing with a four month streak, says, hello, beautiful people. Hello, Razzle Tassel. Why would he contradict himself? Why would he say, oh, Biden ordered this attack and it's a horrible attack? And then he would imply later on that Biden wasn't even aware of the attack. Why? Well, he's sending a message to the Anons and that's and that message is the tweet. Oh, Biden wasn't informed and Kamala hit neither? What does that mean, guys? He's sending a message to Anon saying, dig, dig, dig. And if you dig, you realize this is evidence Trump controls yep. the military. I he's also that. sending a message to the non-Anons. And what message is he sending to the non-Anons? And it's his, it's his message in the CPAC speech. It's the joke about how uh, Biden is a warmonger and it didn't take long for him to go attack people in the Middle East, right? So he's, he's to the people who don't follow politics very closely, the non-Anons that are supporters of Trump, he's saying Trump, Biden's a warmonger. He's a warmonger. He's quickly, he was quick to attack the Middle East. And that's stretching the truth. Biden is a warmonger, but since Trump controls the military, it was Trump that word is attacking. It's a her Okay, but do you not see the issue here, Peter? Because the example that they are giving is something that you think Trump did. Trump didn't do it. It was Biden. But with the internal world that you've created, they are using something that you think is good to somehow call Biden bad. Do you understand that that makes no sense? <laughs> you can't use the same example to say Joe Biden is a warmonger because he did this, but also Trump is good because he did this same thing. Do you understand you can't do that and be consistent? Heroic attack. So he's, it's like a, it's like a white lie. Uh, Donald Trump Jr., his job is to make Biden look bad. And Biden is a warmonger. So that part was accurate. But to blame Biden for this attack that Donald Trump ordered is kind of stretching the truth. But it's okay because all is fa fa uh, fair in love and war. And Donald Trump Jr.'s job is to make Biden look bad. So to, for the people who don't do a lot of research in these- Hardlock Moses says, did we stop bombing Syria ever since Obama? No. 
things like me initially i didn't know about the syria attack when i heard donald trump jr saying like oh biden was quick to bomb the middle east i was like yeah biden's a warmonger he's evil but when i look more into it i was like hey 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 you're stretching the truth here donald trump ordered that attack not biden but you're right biden if he controlled the military would be a warmonger so it's it's kind of true kind of not true but the point is there's two things going on here there's that part where he's giving a message to the Anons, being like, guys, my father controls the military. And then he's giving a message to the non-Anons, Anons, which is Biden's a warmonger. And since they don't know Yeah, that, this guy talks in circles. He says the same thing over and over and over, too. Biden. Like, this video is almost 15 minutes long. He probably could have fit this into six tops. <laughs> Crizio with 50 bits says, wait, he deep dives on politics and has no idea about the Syria attack until John Don Jr. CPAC speech? Hey, he's busy watching YouTube videos before they get banned for conspiracy theories, okay? Bardlock Moses says, so Biden doing, so Biden doing start bombing, he just kept it going. This guy is reaching hard. He doesn't control the military. He's like, look, look, he's attacking people. He's bombing the Middle East. So he's pretending in his CPAC speech that Biden controls the military. And if Biden did, he would be a warmonger. So it's, it's things aren't very simple. Like you can't be like, oh, I watched the, the CPAC speech and he's condemning the Syria attack. So that means you're wrong, Peter. Well, look at it from a bigger perspective. What, he's give, what if he's giving two messages? One's to the Anons and one to the non-Anons. Because he's contradicting himself. In the CPAC speech, he's saying, oh, Biden ordered this attack. But then in his tweet, he's saying, I don't think Biden ordered the attack. These contradictions are hints to Anons. I've seen this over and over again in the last two months. Team Trump is, when they send you, when they say two contradictory things, this is about hinting to people about what's going on. So it could be wrong, but this is my perspective on it. This is my analysis on it. It makes sense to me. I'm trying to look at stuff not from like a narrow perspective, but a broader perspective, which is, to acknowledge other possibilities might exist, that there's an information war going on, that Team Trump is giving hints and clues to the Anon so they can dig, dig, dig. So people like me can look into this and be like, hey, I have a different perspective on it. And I'm gonna tell you guys what my perspective on it is. So I think that's the purpose that Donald Trump Jr. would make this tweet to, for like people who, like me who will dig into this and then inform all the Anons and be like, guys, this is evidence that Trump the president the and his son so, are speaking directly wrong, but to I me. I want to know what you guys think. Is my analysis good? Am I explaining it well? Don, I hope I'm explaining it well. Donald Trump Jr. contradicted himself because he has two different messages for two different people. But generally speaking, I think the main message Donald Trump Jr. sent was that his father controls the military because if Kamala's not ordering the Pentagon and Biden isn't, then only one other person will be controlling the military especially when you consider that these military actions are complete in alignment with Trump's agenda. So I just wanted to apologize that my previous Peter's political perspective is arriving late. Um, I, they're supposed to be out by 9 a.m., but uh, YouTube had to review it. Right now, as I speak, YouTube is still reviewing that video, and I can't release it. Good luck with that one. Until it's been reviewed by YouTube and given the go-ahead. So... Usually my videos will be available every morning at 9 a.m., but if there's some type of delay, it'll come out like 12 or maybe 3.30 after the review process um, goes Someone through. has a bingo? So or apologize we playing for that, bingo? I guess I didn't mention it. will be available but... at 9 a.m., and hopefully this one will go through quickly and be available at 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. You guys have been amazing supporters. Share this oh, video, and gotcha. it definitely makes sense to share this in conjunction with the previous one because they're... they're um, it's like part one and part two. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for supporting me. And I hope this... You get it. <laughs> uh. ...you that I now have confirmation on how Trump controls the military and that he does... I did vaguely see the Snyder Geeks and Gamers drama, but I haven't really dug into it control the military and that the military is taking orders from Trump. we're not going to watch this whole video because i know this guy's kind of hard to sit through but um, i wanted to get some highlights that there will be arrests happening soon i have soon, confirmation from someone else who's confirming these things my name is peter hannah 
This is Peter's political perspective. Positive perspective, really. <laughs> Click on the subscription button in the bottom right corner of the screen so you can be updated on when the most optimistic news on how Trump is winning and how Trump will be president and how Trump commands the military. You got to be updated on this news. So please click the subscription button. I'm trying to make you happy, fill you with hope, with facts. So click on the subscription button. Thank you. So I'm very excited because... You guys in the comments have been pressuring me to listen to Juan 07, and I finally went to Simon Park's website <laughs> and looked at Karen's the Juan Sabin interview. If you go scroll down the blog post, and you'll find it. And Juan 07 is confirming everything I'm been saying about Trump controlling the military, how he'll be president this year, how the military is going to put Trump into office and to be president this year. I mean, mind blown, because not only does Juan 07 confirm every main thing I've been saying on my YouTube channel, but on top of that, he explains the legal process on why the military is following Trump's orders. And so the, re the legal reason that military is following Trump's orders and they're going to put him back in the office is because they swore an oath to protect the people in war times and to protect the Constitution. And just off that basis, they are obligated, legally obligated to follow Trump and take orders from him and to not cooperate with the Biden administration. And so why, why would you think that Biden won the election legally? <laughs> it seems like you're presupposing a lot of things that you shouldn't presuppose there. We have major confirmation. This honestly, like, look, I know I've thrown out different theories like I've thrown out three different theories on how Trump controls the military. And it's because I know he controls the military. I just wasn't sure how. Why are you sure? What do you mean you're sure? You believe it, but why do you think you're sure? One way I said was the uh, Transition Act, the one that I talked about in one of my previous videos. And Reuters came out with an article debunking it. Actually, several articles came out debunking the Transition Act and saying that Trump actually doesn't have military power I also debunked that, as anyone could have if they actually read the thing and had reading comprehension skills. Until March 20th because of the Transition Act. So, maybe I'm wrong about that. Probably am. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's the most self-aware I've ever heard him. <laughs> sorry, everyone. I made multiple videos about complete bullshit. But anyway, back to some really true stuff that's definitely for realsies. Then my other theory of how Trump controls the military was that he signed an executive order that made himself commander in chief. And is good. That's why I find this guy interest more interesting than a lot of other people who follow this particular conspiracy theory based on the 17th letter of the alphabet, right? <laughs> because usually I'd see them be like, no, Reuters is fake news. That's bullshit. But like, no, he took it in stride. Kind of. He's like, oh, I was wrong. Whoops. Back onto the other stuff. And he's just like, nothing can deter his positivity. It's so weird. As good as that argument sounds, I had no legal evidence of it. But the final argument I made is that the military will follow Trump's orders and they will take orders from him because they swore an oath to protect the people in war times and also swore an oath to the Constitution to protect the Constitution. And so that third theory is the one that ended up being correct. This is very exciting because I have major confirmation from someone who definitely sounds like he knows exactly what's going on. I don't know if he's an insider. This guy, 107, he has, he doesn't show his face, so he's kind of mysterious. But I really recommend you go, I can't put the link in my description. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I could. But go to simonparks.org. I know I don't really trust Simon Parks so much. But I think the content on his website can be good. So you go to signparks.org, you scroll down until you get to the 107 video. Watch that, and he will explain. I'd love to debate with this guy. I, I think I actually looked, and you can have like a, co a business contact email on your About YouTube page, but he doesn't have one, so I, haven't, I, I have no way of getting in contact with him. Um... I guess I haven't looked that far, though, but to my knowledge, he doesn't have any links to a Twitter or anything, so I don't even know how I would... I guess I'll search him on Twitter. Let, let's see if he has a Twitter or anything. 
Let me switch to the other camera. I'm always wary of looking at Twitter with uh, the share screen on because there tends to be a decent amount of porn on Twitter. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing anything under that name. Yeah, no. I don't see it, unfortunately. Uh, Chrysia says, two videos ago he said Simon Parks was often correct. Now he doesn't trust him? <laughs> you know, it just depends on the day. It depends on if he's recently been proven wrong or not. Explain in detail. The Lexa Black says Twitter is a nice wholesome site. I don't know what you're talking about. Yesterday, once again, Daddy Sume showed us his... Uh, OC D and D character with two dicks. So, just just saying, Twitter is like seventy percent stupid arguments and thirty percent horny on main. That's how I describe Twitter. More of the legal process on why Trump is commanding the military, why why there will be arrests. He explains in more detail. I cannot give you any more details, but I do have some new information confirmed by Juan Osavin. Information such as Biden is not being allowed on Air Force One. So the the Air Force One video we had was f fake. In fact, look at this picture that I have here. This. <laughs> okay, so he's on a different Air Force plane. For some reason, it's possible that there's work being done on Air Force One. I don't know. This is the military airplane they gave him. Biden is. We literally saw Biden on getting onto Air Force One just the other day. I know because he like tripped and fell, and it's like a big meme. So we've seen him get on and off of Air Force One. Not in Air Force One, and that. Do I mean this? Yes, yes, I do mean that. That's a not safe for work link. <laughs> we have confirmation that because we are in war times. The military, actually... The United States is in war times? It must be a year ending with a number. Did not... It was, the military was the only section of the government that did not hand power over to Biden when Biden got inaugurated. They were the only section... Von Tuck says, Trump had a Diet Coke button put in the White House. I wonder if he had one on Air Force One. People make fun of that, un understandably. I get it. But for the record... Every president has, every recent president has had a button like that. Some just get different things. Trump was Diet Coke. Some of them ha drank tea or coffee or whatever. But it is easiest for them to have a button so that if they're thirsty or whatever, they just have someone come in so they don't have to, <laughs> you know, when they're busy, whatever. Baja says, does he not know that any plane the president is on is Air Force One? No, no, he doesn't. Actually, because they're patriots. And what they did... It is a call sign, correct. Typically, the, the presidential plane is c called Air Force One because it's the plane the president travels on the most because it has all the security features and stuff. But yes, uh, planes become Air Force One. And actually, uh, Trump was in the air uh, in Air Force One during Biden's inauguration. So the plane took off as Air Force One because Trump was still president when they took off and it landed with a different call sign. Fun fact. It is explained in more detail in Juan Osavin's video. I can't, I literally cannot tell you. But what I can tell you is as a result of them not handing over control to Biden, they have now gotten to the point where they have put Trump back into a position of power, at least privately. They're taking orders from him. And the next move is arrest the first two step the there were three steps that the military had to do after biden got inaugurated the first one i can't i can't talk about the second one was to put trump in a position of power they did it third third move is arrest so and they did the first two that means they're on plan not plan number three they're on uh you know action number three the next step step number three and step number two, uh, a guy playing a game. Thank you for following. Three is to make arrests. And because 
the best way to make arrests is actually through military tribunals. So arrests will happen and these people will go to Guantanamo Bay for military tribunal. So this is very- He says tribunal very interestingly. Tribunal. This is a case if it's a word. And I've done this too. I think everyone does this occasionally. When it's a word you've only ever seen written down, but you've never heard someone say it. And then you say it somewhere and someone's like, what do you mean? And then they pronounce it correctly. Tribunal. <laughs> very exciting <laughs> because I've been saying all along, Trump controls the military, Trump controls the military. And I wasn't sure how he did, but I knew, I knew he controlled the military. I knew it. And now I have a confirmation on how of the, my three theories and how <laughs> Daddy Sube says bone apple teat controls, uh, commands the military legally. The one about the military swearing an oath to the constitution, not the president, that ended up being the correct theory. And I'm sorry I got the other ones wrong. I'm a speculator, but I'm also a political uh, analyst and commentator and something. Oof, I don't know about that one. That's a little generous. 107, 107, it wasn't 107, 107. I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'll listen to him. And so when I was going to do research and I went to signparks.org, I saw 107 videos. I was like, all right, let me click on this. Oh my gosh, that's why people have been telling me is coming and that I can only speculate. I'm hopeful that it's um, this month or next month. I'm hopeful that it's this year. Logically, strategically, it makes sense for justice to come this year. But the when, we don't know. But will it happen? 100% confident. I'm 100% confident. Red and Foxy, thanks Trump for will be president. 99% chance he'll be president this year. 99%? That's pretty good. I thought it... Wasn't it 100% a while ago? Is he already bringing that number down slowly but surely? So by, like, November, it'll be down to, like, 20%? <laughs> and the military is in control. And Trump commands the military. And all those good stuff you like to hear is confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. Thank God that our military swore an oath to the Constitution and not to Biden. That's why they legally have the, the, the legal option to take orders from Trump. Legally, they have that option. No, because no, no, that's not how that works. Our military swears an oath to the Constitution to protect Americans. So this is, ah, just love the government right now. I love this. I love how there is always a backup plan. There's always a way that God makes things work out. So praise the Lord. Thank God. Uh, thank Trump. Pray for Trump. Pray for the military. And um, be excited because great things are happening. And honestly, I feel like I should start every video now with... Uh, Trump controls the military. Trump will be president. If I, as if I already don't talk about that enough, but it's just, it's just a good. This is just sad at this point. I feel so bad. Feeling when you are confirmed, your theory is confirmed. It's not a theory anymore. It's a fact. And you know the legal process from which Trump controls the military. It's such a good feeling um, to have that confirmed. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for watching. I hope this video lifts you up and for the sixth time, the sixth time I think in this video, I'm recommending going to simonparks.org, scrolling down. Okay, so that's what this guy's been up to. <laughs> Del being delusional. Again, excited to see what he has uh, going on in the future. It's gonna be interesting. Arctic Angel with some bits. True pain is someone making melee attacks in D&D. &D. Also, how do bits work? I'm too old for this. Uh, each bit is a penny. And when you send the message using bits, I get those pennies. Or dollars if it's bits in the hundreds or whatever. Yeah. They're so excited for a military coup. It's really gross. <laughs> I've been so tired lately, I don't know why. I slept bad, not last night, but the night before. I got almost no sleep. I just couldn't fall asleep. Last night I actually slept pretty good, but I'm still tired, and I don't know if it's because of, like, the day before, and I'm still trying to catch up. I don't know. Daddy Sume with a link. Hold on.
<laughs> Weird hill to die on, but at least you're dead. Beautiful. I should be working 555. Thank you for following. Welcome. Okay, let's go back to a sovereign citizen. Ooh, a plane video. Um, Moorish Karen yells at the stewardess on plane about white privilege gets kicked off the plane. So this is going to be a Moorish sovereign citizen. For those who don't know, Moorish sovereign citizens are sort of an offshoot of the Moorish science temple that ended up taking a lot of uh, belief systems from sovereign citizens. Basically, they believe the law doesn't apply to them for a variety of pseudo-historical fabricated reasons. Pretty interesting. We've covered it before. Logarth with 20 bits says, So if I'm an atheist and send you bits, are they pennies from heathen? Um, I need to get a stream deck so I can put groaning sound effects for bad jokes. <laughs> okay, it was a little funny. Uh, a guy playing a game. Thank you for subscribing at Tier 1. Uh, she took her mask off to yell at people on a small enclosed tube. I hope they haven't taken off yet. Gets kicked off plane. Okay, I imagine they're still on the runway then. Otherwise, this video is going to get horrifying real quick. <laughs> Purple Nickel with 100 bits says, It's a weird hill to die on, but at least you're dead. Holy shit, new life motto. <laughs> She's doing me a look, and then she coming. Look, all I'm trying to do is use the bathroom. Then watch, the bathroom. watch. This lady. Oh, I gotta buy a purple fez sometime. I just thought of it. Village hat shop. That's not bad. I don't like the tassel, though. For bad jokes. <laughs> I actually already have this sound effect saved. Do they make a purple fez that doesn't have... Oh, okay, this one's... It's maroon, but it's closer. I guess I could always just get a purple one and cut the tassel off. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. Ooh, I kind of like this hat. <laughs> Whatever. I don't need to be hat shopping right now. The lady is getting aggressive with me. You're not listening. I, I don't have anything against tassels. I just don't want to... I don't like that color yellow that was on that hat. If it was a different color that matched that I liked, I'd probably be fine with it. Child! I'm grown. I'm trying to use the bathroom. The lady is coming. I don't need to I get to my door, ma'am. Now she needs to get to her door. Can I get to my bathroom? No. What do I got to listen to? No, I was blocking you. What do I got to listen to? Are you my boss? You are white privilege. You're not my boss. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. You're not my boss. I need to and you're not my boss. To you're white privilege. Sit down. You don't have privilege over me. <laughs> this isn't even no, what white that... privilege means. Being told to obey the law isn't isn't white privilege. Come on. White privilege is a real thing. Let's not start calling just whatever thing you don't like white privilege. All of a sudden, you gotta go back here. So you wait for anyways. me to get to my okay. bathroom and have respect for me like you've been having. Call them now. Call them. I need Call to get them. to my door. Good. And I need to get to my bathroom. So you write and respect people. You have white privilege and it's not here. It's over with. It's 2020. Yes, it is. Wake yeah. up. You got a mask on. Yes, I do. So you're so under you're the government to too. too. You're confined. <laughs> Oh, God. And you don't have white privilege anymore. I'm a queen. California. Mm -hmm. She was from a black queen. Okay, well, I need you to don't talk because you felt privileged that you got to get in somebody else and tell them 
you're not listening. I don't have to listen to you. Then go to the bathroom. You don't, go to, you don't run me. You go to the bathroom. You shut up and stay in your lane. You have nothing to do with this little girl. I'm not talking to you. Listen to your mama. She should have told. I know you don't care. You so grown. Ma'am, I need to get to my Okay, thank you. What the hell is this? Like I said, y'all don't run people. You don't run America. You run yourself. So get off your little mentality that you better Honestly, than that now. hat could be pretty Thank easily you. modified into being a coronavirus hat, and I kind of want it. Just take the thing at the top and put some, like, spike protein-looking things on it. <laughs> I'd wear that. That's what I say. See this little shit right here? Was it $200? I didn't even notice the price. Holy shit. It's all a little mentality. But you need to understand, you don't run America no more. Everyone's seated at this so, time. That should all Take your seat now. You don't run me. And guess what? When I was 14, they said, oh, you people are so the same. I was like, the shit out that white bitch when she told me that all y'all white people are so the same. And that's I got off that bus in Richmond, California. So you can think all you want to. All uh, y'all people is all the same. That's what y'all teach in your house. But black people don't teach that hate in our house. You need to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. We don't teach hate in our house. Y'all teach hate in your house. Y'all narcissists. But you ain't gonna play that shit with me, yes. Because I'm not a slave. I never came from Africa. I'm an indigenous person okay, to this country. Cool. You shut up. Let me cool. tell you instead of your, what your mama taught you. Let me tell you the truth. I'm the queen in this motherfucker. You understand me? You came from my color. Black make every color. You understand me? Black make every Your people are going extinct. And that's why you're mad. You can't procreate. That's what eugenics was about. That's what eugenics, the Darwin theory, because y'all know the truth. I've been waiting to say this. I've been waiting to say this all my life. You're mad because only black people have the gene to procreate. And y'all know the truth. You come from me. Has she never seen a white baby before? <laughs> what? White people procreate all the time. Me. A black person can make any color in Africa white with blue eyes and blonde hair just like you. Have a twin. One my color and one your color. It's called Esau and Jacob. You be quiet. Let me, yeah, for real. <laughs> Honestly, if I was on this flight, and I, I've had a lot of air, bad airplane airport experiences. I've flown a lot. One time for work, I was I went and was part of an event. Uh, I spoke at a convention in Texas, and on the way back, <laughs> oh my god, I, my flight was supposed to leave at nine a.m. And I'm, that flight got super delayed for mechanical problems, and I had changeovers. So I was originally supposed to get home around, like, 3 p.m. or something like that. I ended up getting home with the delays at 2 in the morning? I just had to spend all day sitting in the airport. That sucked. But if I was on this plane, I'd probably enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> I'd probably pull out a phone and be like, ooh, content. And I got the promise to my people. And you mad. Because the promise is coming. You understand me? You'll never. You can take me to jail. You're mad. Go ahead. Now let me let, let, me let my people know the truth on this motherfucker. Esau and Jacob, you mad. Because the promise is coming to my people. For those who don't know. Esau and Jacob is a biblical reference. Uh, Esau and Jacob were two brothers. Um, <clears throat> one of them was very hairy and, like, large. He was like a beast of a man is the point. And then the brother's kind of like a twink. Um, and uh, the dad is going to give most of the, his land and property and everything to the big manly hairy brother. And... <laughs> The big hairy brother's kind of dumb, so he ends up selling his birthright, his land and stuff that he's going to get from the father for, like, a bowl of soup. So then the Twinkie brother gets, like, uh, uh, Bible stories are so weird, gets a, like, like, uh, the skin of an animal, here's a good illustration, and puts it on himself to simulate how hairy his brother is, and the dad is dying and blind, 
So he goes to the dad and is like, hey, father, I get all the property, am I right? And the dad feels his arms, and he's like, oh yeah, you're the hairy one, that's right. And he gives him some soup and he dies. <sighs> Never figured out why that story was in the Bible. Um, yeah, It's been a while since I read it. I guess I don't remember the specific reasoning, but it was probably about a pseudo-historical explanation for certain tribes of Israel existing in the way they did contemporarily to the tribe existing. A lot of Old Testament stories are about that stuff. Oh, what's the moral? Um, that's a good question. Again, I'd have to read it again. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say. The book of Genesis speaks of the relationship between fraternal twins, Jacob and Esau, uh, son of Isaac and Rebekah, focusing on Esau's loss of his birthright to Jacob and the uh, conflict that ensued between their descendant nations because of Jacob's deception of their aged and blinded father in order to receive Esau's birthright. Ah, so it's possible, and this happens a lot, is that like Esau and Jacob are probably considered sort of patriarchs to different groups of Israelites who are in conflict, so this story is explaining how the conflict originated, even though it's maybe, you know, <laughs> either embellished or fictional. Yeah, this is interesting, too. The first name, Jacob, uh, which, by the way, definitely uh, not a name I have any uh, negative feelings toward. <laughs> Dead name. Um, <laughs> the name Jacob means uh, he grasps the heel. Uh, it's a Hebrew idiom, Hebrew idiom for deceptive behavior, because according to this story, uh, uh, Esau was supposed to be born first, and then Jacob in the womb pulled and like was like no i'm coming out first and that's how he got the birthright which isn't how babies work in case you're curious <laughs> jacob equals israel the father of all israelites yeah he ended up has he ends up having um uh, he ends up having a bunch of kids, including Joseph, and I'm not, I can't name them all, but it's Zebulun and, and, uh, Nash, Nash or something? I don't remember, but they're all representative of each of the tribes of Israel. Is East, is the other brother supposed to grow up and, like, be the father of the Canaanites or something? And that explains their conflict within their mythology. And you think we stole the birthright? But it's your shut up, bitch. It's coming to us. It's coming to us. You understand me? You can't do nothing about it. That's why y'all so mad. But this whole corona shit is all about is that God is coming back for his Oh, how does that story have to do with her rant? Uh, some black nationalists think that that story is about a white brother and a black brother and a conflict between them they they create it they turn it into a racial issue as opposed to what it was originally written as which i guess is sort of a racial issue for the time the differing tribes that were in conflict but it wasn't about like race like we think of race as uh, a sort of collection as uh, phenotypical averages colors of skin and stuff Logarth of 20 bit says the air marshal is laughing their ass off right now as they get ready to drag this queen off the plane and I don't give a damn. He's black. And when it comes, y'all gotta get this racist shit out of here. Because if you don't, you can't accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't give a damn. That's what it's all about. Because he looks like you and he looks like me. That's what he looks like. I'm tired of it. She gonna get it. They think I got so much white privilege to tell people what to do, but she need to understand California is a black queen. And that's who I am. I will. I don't have a problem. She laughing is funny, but she need to understand and respect the queen when she see one in her face. Bow down, bitch, because your eyes is recessive. I got the dominant gene. I took all. I got A plus and all of it. That's right. 
Bardlock Moses says, I miss flying out to Los Angeles to visit my mom, but too many cove idiots flying right now. I bet. Logarth with 20 bits says, oh God, no wonder it took him so long. They had to find the one black cop on duty. I wonder if that was a, a, a thought, if they're like, we should probably find a non-white officer so this doesn't escalate. <laughs> oh, yikes. And you are about to become a part Here's another video from A Call for an Uprising. One of our favorite conspiracy theorists. He believes in all sorts of wackadoo things. So let's take a look. This is A Call for an Uprising. Welcome to today's show. I'm doing this video as another video where I know I'm going to be able to simplify this enough for you to share it with your friends and your family to at least raise their eyebrows to make them think and question some things that are going on. I'm going to show them through the constant mainstream narratives, the same repetition that's being used to push all of these major New World Order agendas. So listen to this video, share this video. I promise you it'll be informative. Now, repetition, I've said a million times, is the key to mind control. For those of you who don't understand what that means, think about when you hear a song in the car, right? And then the song's stuck in your head for days and days. You don't even like the song, and you find yourself singing it in the shower. That's because you're hearing the song over and over and over. Call Me Maybe. Call Me Maybe is that song. A lot of people actually don't like a song when they first hear Call for a Rainbow. He actually has to make a new Call for a Rainbow channel soon because this channel got a strike and he's mad about it. So he's going to be making another Call for a Rainbow channel so he can jump to that one. For those who don't know, this guy gets... um banned and demonetized all the time for spreading ridiculous conspiracy theories and anti-medical information and stuff um so what he'll do as a strategy is he will ban evade by creating a channel called a call for a rainbow and then he'll do a pretty offensive and not funny um let's just say he, he'll put on what is considered a stereotypical uh gay affect and make parody videos of what he thinks other youtubers are doing <laughs> and it's very cringe i'm actually kind of excited for more call for a rainbow content because it's hilarious not in the ways he wants but nonetheless it does make me laugh uh and then after getting monetized on call for a rainbow he will then change the name to a call for an uprising and go back to his normal conspiratorial bullshit weird it's the repetition that makes them like the song because they're actually under a form of mind control that's why you might catch a guy who's a metalhead singing a Backstreet Boys song in the shower or humming it to him. Or it's because Backstreet Boys is lit, okay? I don't care if you're into metal. You can also listen to like, oh God, what's the one Backstreet Boys song that I like so much? Everybody, yeah, I'm very flat. Yeah, rock your body, you get it. Backstreet's back, all right. Where's my record contract? But seriously, if you don't like Backstreet Boys at least a little, I don't trust you. Daddy Sume says Backstreet's back. Street's back all right, yeah. Himself, and I'll say, why is this crap in my head? Well, it's because you probably heard it 50 times in the radio. You heard it in the background while you're grocery shopping, while you're at the dentist's office. What? Wait, what other songs are Backstreet Boys songs? Backstreet Boys. I Want It That Way is great. Everybody's great. Larger Than Life is pretty good. I don't know if I know any others off the top of my head. I was never a huge fan, but the one, the big songs I, I like. Right? That's how mind control works. And it all... Unconditional Prong 1 says, I got a boyfriend. Congratulations. <laughs> starts with your brain obviously right think of your brain as a computer pad or just think of it as an empty have i heard postmodern jukebox i want it that way probably i listen to postmodern jukebox pretty regularly i don't remember if i've heard that particular song though d 
SD computer, I should say, not a pad. I have, actually, now that I think about it. I think it's on my playlist for that stuff. Yeah, they're good. A computer, right? It comes to your house, you open it up, and there's nothing on that computer yet. But you start putting information on the computer, you start downloading your music, you start putting whatever things you put on there, pictures of yourself. And I mean, there is stuff on computers when you buy a computer. Presumably, if it's a pre-built, it has an OS, and it has, like, built-in programs and all that kind of thing. But I understand your metaphor. It's just kind of a clumsy one. Your family and other things that you might watch. This guy made a reply explaining monetization. What is this? Oh, it's that argument you were having with this guy who's like a chud. <laughs> Making profit. Uh, YouTubers can monetize things. They put out videos. But that doesn't mean it'll turn a profit. This is a corporation like Disney. Disney is bleeding money because they are not making good projects. They've lost faith from their customer base. What? Before COVID, Disney was making like all time high profits. What are you talking about? And they're they're not making money right now specifically because their parks have been for the last year and their parks are like people don't know this necessarily but uh the majority of disney's revenue comes from uh uh not just movies but their theme parks their theme parks are actually huge revenue centers for disney um and they've been either closed or at limited capacity for like a year it's screwing them over pretty badly um, Disney Plus and its expansion over the last year has helped pick up some of that slack, but... Losing, uh, money. So they can monetize a ton of projects all day. That doesn't mean it turns profit. Is his argument just that YouTube doesn't make enough money? Okay. I don't really care. <laughs> as long as they keep paying me, and as long as Google keeps it afloat. or do or whatever let me put it this way i don't think youtube and google necessarily make m profit or at least not a large profit from ads and youtube premium subscriptions alone however i think when you factor in all the data that they're able to get from people based on their video watching habits probably makes money or at least is a valuable tool for their other endeavors uh and their ad services and stuff or have on their work documents etc cetera, etc cetera. The human brain when you're born is just like an empty computer showing up at your house. And this is the reason that they want to get us all into schools at a young age while the brain is still developing because... Or because you need to teach children things so they're not idiots. Probably one of the two. Young children are absorbing this information. Whatever information is given to them, they absorb, right? And that's why it is so important to get these children to the elite, at least to the Illuminati, the New World Order, to get children into the school system fast so that they can program their brains. What happens from there is they begin programming their brains with a history of lies. All the things that they tell us are not true. We live in a world of lies. That is what life inside of the Matrix is like. From history to the stuff that we're told that's important in you know English class to science <laughs> class to this goddamn Oxford comma bullshit. When am I going to use this? For, you know, dissecting frogs and chemistry, all stuff that's worthless to you in the future. It won't be worthless to you in the future if you decide you want to go into certain fields. Dissecting a frog in your anatomy class or your science class. Uh, I did that in my anatomy class. We did, I think we did frog and we did fetal pig, if I remember correctly. Um, do I use that information often? No, but it's interesting and it's valuable for kids to understand. But also, someone in that class could learn that it's something that they're interested in. Maybe they end up wanting to go into surgery or internal medicine or something like that. And then they have a knowledge base that they can take with them as they go into higher education to train for these jobs, right? Not only that, but just information for information's sake can be great. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I don't understand being against... Like, how can you spin anatomy class where you literally just learn the organs of the body for mammals or whatever you happen to be studying and 
say that's a bad thing or politically skewed in some way. It's literally just, this is what posterior and anterior means. At least in my anatomy class, they explained all the sort of medical jargon as to how you describe different parts of the body. Um, and, and like, here's where this organ is, and this is what this organ does, and here's the skeletal system, and here's how the nervous system functions. Like, <laughs> it's information that's good to know as a human being. But they want to indoctrinate you with this stuff. And as I get into the agenda, such as femi the feminist movement, this is one of the reasons why the feminist movement is so important. Because by brain... I say posterior weird. Brainwashing women and... Pyromancer says, I wish we could go program brains. I'd like to download skills in piano. Yeah, like the Matrix. Trying to empower them. What it does is it gets the woman to try to compete with the man. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It is. Thus telling a woman that being a mother is not an important job, that being a mother means nothing. No one is telling women that being a mother means nothing. The messaging in our society is very, very pro-mother. It's fine. The only difference is people are also taught if you don't want to be a parent, that's also okay, which is reasonable. Not everyone has to go and have kids if they don't want to. And they shouldn't if they don't want to because then those kids are going to have shitty parents who are disinterested from actually being parents. Pyromancer with 20 bits says, no party read that one, sorry. That a woman should go earn, a man should go earn, because this is how they get their hands on the children. This is how they brainwash the children, and this is why we live in a world of walking, talking zombies. This is why when you go to school, and I'm sure everybody listening to this at one point in your life, you said to yourself, what is the point of this, right? Didn't we learn this already? These sound like familiar quotes, for those of you who are still you know, in school listening, right? You're like, didn't we learn this in seventh grade and eighth grade and ninth grade? Oh, well, this year, instead of learning geometry, you're going to learn algebra or whatever, right? Trig. Oh, okay. So it's a little bit different, but it's the same stuff. Does a call for an uprising not understand that using algebra is not the same thing as using calculus or trig or geometry these are all different math fields that are used for different purposes just because they all use numbers doesn't mean it's all the same thing <laughs> good god right same with english class oh you know we're gonna read this book instead of that book but then we're gonna talk about this guy and you know the same thing shakespeare the same you know freemason Elites that they love to shove down everyone's throat. Ooh, 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 I get to add a new thing to the list. Hold on. Hold on. I, I'll do this. Don't worry. I got this. How do you spell Shakespeare. I know it's I know it's not how I'm gonna try and spell it. Shakes Shakespeare is now satanic or something. Also, he says English class, it's always the same. You read one book and then you read a different book. Does a call for an uprising know that it would probably help if he literally ever looked inside of a book. But like this book, which is a book, it's got a spine, it's got writing on it. Th this book has entirely different words in it and different concepts than this book or any other book that I have. Books are different on the inside if you actually open one up and read it. <laughs> I don't know if he knows that. It's almost like you learn different things from different books. Weird. Right? And then inside of this system, the people who are rewarded are the ones who buy into the repetition. The ones who are doing their best and getting their best grades because they've been programmed enough to get the best grades because they're buying into the system. And then they're rewarded with better schooling, better jobs. And really what happens is when a lot of these kids, you know, who have high GPAs, who buy into this, Oh no, this just feels like a rant against successful people in education because Call for an Uprising probably didn't do very well in school. <laughs> He's mad about it and has to come up with, well, they're just all Illuminati shills anyway. I didn't learn math because I'm not a sheeple. 
Pyromancer says, all books are tools of Satan. And then Dread Pirate uh, Mick, thank you for subscribing with Prime for four months. Who, you know, oh, I want to work so hard and get high grades and think that that's what life's all about. Learning the most lies they possibly can to get the highest GPA. And then they go off to these universities and a lot of times they'll be recruited at these universities. Ivy League schools, like I've said a million times, not just bloodline members are part of these secret societies. They recruit people who have high, you know, they believe have high IQs, high GPAs. So the evil cabal is a meritocracy? Okay, that's better than I thought. And are people who are going to follow along because they've they've already processed that these people are followers, not leaders, because they haven't questioned the system that they've been put in. They've you just said they have higher IQs. People with higher IQs tend to be more skeptical and less easily led than people with lower IQs. These and again, IQs bullshit. I'm not making statements like oh this is a hard rule or anything, but in my experience, people with higher level I'll, I'll say higher levels of education. Let's put it that way. Not IQ, because IQ is stupid. People with higher levels of education and practical skill level tend to have better critical thinking skills. They just do. They've embraced it, and, then, and they've gone further above to continue to brainwash themselves into embracing it, getting, you know, getting their bachelors to masters to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we're all victims of this. I've, I graduated college. Um, you know, I went through this stuff. Oh, God. What did a call for an uprising have a major in? Jesus Christ. Does he have just like a, a an associate's degree or what? Pyromancer says, press X to doubt. Because I was told I had to do it, but it didn't mean I didn't question it the whole time and say it's a bunch of crap. Didn't mean that I didn't try to scam my way around some of the stuff going on in college and the school system because I knew it was just a total waste of my time and my energy. And eventually, obviously, it led to my awakening, but I knew something was wrong, right? We've all gone through this, so don't feel like if, you, if you're if you going through it that there's something wrong with you or you're stupid, because this is the system they've set up so that you can go achieve the paper money that they print at the top of the pyramid, okay? So the repetition is the key. Now, for those of you who go, well, I don't really know if I buy into this repetition and you don't believe in how, you know, all the stuff in schools are lies and all that stuff. Let's talk about the main agendas that the mainstream media pushes today. Oh, please. Let's, let's. start with feminism, right? <laughs> oh, no, not feminism. I hate when women have equal rights. What they have to do is in all of these music videos and all of these shows is empower Women make wi women victims, right? The Me Too movement. This is all seed planting for women to strive to become executives and all this stuff to make them feel as if being a mother is not a job. Right? What are you talking about? Again, it's fine. No one is telling, at least not in any substantial cultural narrative sense, that women shouldn't be mothers. That's complete falsehood. The only thing that could even be construed as close to that is the fact that we now live in a society. We live in a society. <laughs> uh, the fact that we live in a society. Again, I got to get a stream deck. So whenever that comes up, I can just play the, the clip from the Justice League trailer where he says we live in a society. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, uh, people who misconstrue the idea that it's socially acceptable to not have children or whatever. Uh, or for women to have jobs and construing that to mean that women are being told not to be mothers, which isn't the case. It's about choice. Right? Oh, the nanny can watch the kid. Or, oh, you know, we'll put the kid in a daycare center so the kid could possibly be trafficked or something like that. Or we'll put the kid here, we'll put the kid there. Now, this oh isn't saying that Oh, my God. This is an interesting thing that ties into the satanic panic from the 80s, too. This was another time where there was sort of, in the 70s and 80s, um, progress happening in uh, feminism and women's rights. Women were starting to get into the workplace more often uh, in jobs that were typically held by men in the past. And there was this scare tactic almost from reactionaries that were like doing the satanic panic stuff. And one of the things they would say is like, oh, watch out about putting your kid in a daycare. They're going to do satanic rituals to your children or traffic your children or whatever. And it was really basically a reaction to women using daycares instead of being stay-at-home moms because they wanted to have careers of their own. Um, so it was just a way of trying to scare parents away from putting them in daycare centers. Really messed up. Krizia says, rich people used to exclusively have their kids raised by nannies. It's been the norm for thousands of years. Yeah. 
<sighs> Women shouldn't work and have jobs. Of course not. I'm talking about the feminist movement. You know, if you're a married and, you know, you guys, as a couple, you need more income to take care of your family. Obviously, okay, that's fine. But feminism and a woman working and doing certain things is not one and the same. Okay? It is their goal to push the feminist movement to get children raised by the system. Right? What? Because what is... Have you ever heard the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child? Society as a whole and other people taking on certain responsibilities to help raise children, whether it's just for social good or whether it's for money, whether we're talking about, like, in the past, wet maids or nannies or whatever. Um, I'm trying to remember what the word is. Whatever. People taking care of kids or today your modern-day daycare where it's a bunch of kids being taken care of by uh, professionals, hopefully. Um, that's fine. That's reasonable. Nowhere... It, it, let me put it this way. It's relatively uncommon in human history for children to solely be raised by their parents with no input from other people. You do not raise a child in isolation. That's not how it works. You're still their parents, and therefore, in many ways, you're like the rudder that's steering what they learn and how they view the world. But you're not the only person who gets to have input because other people are around your kids, and kids are little sponges, and they're going to learn things all the time. And you're not there all the time because that's how the world works. It's missing from the system. God is missing from the system. Values are missing from the system. Fam in your opinion, I don't agree. Von Tux with 100 bits says, I'd pay good money to see Call for an Uprising react to radio by Ramenstein. I'd bet he have, he'd have a conspiracy gasm. Emily. Okay. Now, the feminist movement, for those of you who don't believe it's something that they're trying to brainwash everyone with. Oh, no. Oceans 8. That's got mostly women in it. The horror. Let's just take a look at some of the stuff that's going on casually in the media and look at the repetition being done. Does he think um, Oceans 11, 12, and 13 are pro-male propaganda then, since those all had teams of, like, mostly or all men, depending on the movie? From Oceans 8, right? They've taken the Oceans 11 movies and now turned Oceans 8 with an all-female cast empowering females to Ghostbusters with an all-female cast. Wait, is the original Ghostbusters a male propaganda film because it's because it, all the ghostbusters are men because i don't think that <laughs> so why would you think the opposite when it's just women pyromancer says call is being pretty repetitive clearly this is a psyop everything is a psyop okay so nothing is to the bringing back of television shows like roseanne and murphy brown which Roseanne doesn't even have Roseanne on it anymore because she's a big piece of shit and <laughs> got canceled. Are about empowered women. Now, Murphy Brown more so than Roseanne. I'm surprised he didn't bring up the gender non-conforming kid from Roseanne or the Connors or whatever the show's called now. But there's a reason that they're bringing these Murphy Brown shows back to movies like Mom's Night Out and Rough Night and Bad Mom's Christmas. These are movies of <laughs> bad. He mentioned bad moms Christmas, but not bad moms. Okay. About women acting as men, right? Women deciding that, oh, they're going to get drunk and they're going to go out and party and they're going to go out and hook up. And I'm not saying condoning that being right for men either. Right. They poison men into living that lifestyle. Now they want to poison women into doing it. <laughs> Does he think that before these movies, women didn't go out and have fun with their friends and have drinks and get laid? Oh, call you, you sweet summer child. <laughs> Bad Mom's Christmas sounds like porn. A little bit. Uh, Patia, thank you for following. But this is a way to empower women into, hey, it's Friday night. Instead of having a family night, let's go out. Let's get crazy, right? Movie after movie after movie with an all-female cast compared to an all-male cast, right? Which is exactly what they want. And the feminist movement with the Me Too movement making women... Right, but like what's... And again, I didn't even really like Ghostbusters 2016. I thought it was just like not funny. And I thought it was a little cringe. But the concept itself of them all being women doesn't really matter. It's fine. The first movie had all men. I don't see the issue. The execution, what was what was wrong with that movie, not the concept. Women look like victims. This is getting more and more women 
to not only despise men, but to want to achieve more inside of the system. And that's what they want. They want you to almost climb the stairs like the Masonic staircase inside of the system. So they, oh, here, you can make more money. Here, we'll dangle some carrots over here. Capitalism. You're mad at capitalism, not Freemasonry. Meanwhile, give us your kid if you have it. And if you don't have a kid, you don't want to have a kid, right? That's another way for them to depopulate. Okay? <laughs> but if you do have a kid, listen, mom's going to be an executive. Dad's going to be a, an executive. And the child, well, he's ours. And we're going to raise him with fake history of the wars of the world and who were behind it. We're not going to... Oh, yikes. If we were playing bingo, that would be thinly veiled anti-Semitism for sure. Educate them on the Rockefellers. I can educate them on how to farm. That's a fair point. I should probably put staircase on here, huh? I'm going to specifically put uh, Freemason staircase. Uh, Pyromancer with 20 bits says, I think he might be onto something. Birds of Prey was terrible because it was all female. Oh, wait, it was just a bad movie regardless. Oh, I kind of like Birds of Prey. It was certainly an improvement over a lot of other DC movies, but fair enough. Um, does he not believe the Holocaust happened? If I had to guess, he's probably a denier. Um, but what I was more talking about was the fact that he said, like, all these wars and who's behind them. That's a big JQ talking point, is that every war is caused by, you know, such and such anti-Semitic comment. Uh, Call Meme Mommy says, Hello Hannah, I just treated myself with a thousand biddies, and they're probably all going to you. I just tuned in. How's the stream? And I agree. F. Roseanne. Stream's going good. Thank you. How to take care of themselves, how to take care of their bodies. No. We're going to raise them and educate them on nonsense and bullcrap and lies. And then after enough years of conditioning, they're going to defend this same system because this system is all they know. So when people like a call for an uprising or others go after them or, you know, ask them the question what's going on or they hear us speak, they get defensive and defend the system because that's all they know is the indoctrination of lies. That's it. It's almost like telling them the world they live in doesn't exist. They don't want to hear it. They protect the system. They're protective of it. So you see the feminist movement all over the place. Another one that I constantly talk about is the LGBT from the homosexual agenda to the trans agenda. Now, this is guys. Did you remember at the last meeting of the LGBT where we laid out our agenda? That was fun. Thanks to whoever brought uh, the cupcakes. They were delicious. I'd love to get the recipe. Please let me know. Unconditional Prong says, The Sia movie music is so woke because it has the femoids and the non-whites. The movie actually sucks for other reasons. <laughs> okay. This is no way, shape, or form hate speech. I'd like to make that clear and put a disclaimer. <laughs> That's not how this works. You don't get to just say, By the way, this isn't hate speech, and then say a bunch of hate speech. That's not how that works in there because every time i expose these things i get strikes because they don't want this exposed because they don't want you to believe that my control is real or it's because you're denigrating an entire group of people based on their identity but they've strategically placed gay characters in television shows now for 60 70 years right <laughs> or think about this gay people exist in the real world okay so, when you make a TV show, sometimes you put in gay people because gay people exist. Right. Whether you knew the character... Pyromancer says, I declare bankruptcy. Uh, bitter old ass broad says, I need the minutes from that meeting. And then call me mommy says, because as we know, there are no crappy action movies that only star men. Yeah, also he said <laughs> 60 to 70 years. 70 years ago would have been the 1950s. How many gay characters were on TV in the 50s? And I don't mean I don't mean characters that you can look at today and go, hmm, that's gay coded. I mean explicitly gay characters. Let's see, who was the first, like the earliest I can think of in terms of ex 
not even necessarily really gay, but like homosexuality was a topic was three's company because the guy pretends to be gay so he can live in the apartment with those women hold on first gay character on tv uh 1977 the TV show Soap becomes the first U.S. sitcom to feature an openly gay character, uh, Jody Dallas, played by Bill Crystal. Subsequently, Crystal became the first actor to pay, play an openly gay character on a primetime U.S. TV show uh, on the Nancy Walker show. So that was 77. That's not 50 years. That's not 70 years ago. Uh, that's closer to 50-ish. And even then, it didn't become a regular thing until very recently. Relatively speaking, the 90s was when it first started showing up, and even then it was often on niche shows, like, uh, I shouldn't say niche, but, like, like shows where that was the premise. It wasn't just usually, oh, there happens to be a gay character, although that did happen occasionally in the 90s, uh, but it would be on shows like Will and Grace, where, like, a lot of the premise and, and plots have to do with the characters not being straight. <laughs> there was gay or not. Now I'll or like Ellen, which wasn't even about that, but then Ellen DeGeneres actually came out and they wrote it into the show. Obviously, since Ellen. I like that he brings up Ellen, too, because it's like the the gay person he knows from TV because he's not really up with pop culture. <laughs> Does he even know that people hate Ellen now? Do you think he knows? Who gets shoved down her throat? They make sure that Ellen has her own show, that Ellen's always in the spotlight, right, for a reason. Because they want you to accept, 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 because the mindset of Satanism and the occult is do without will. Okay? They want you to do everything they can to defile the, to defile the Bible, to defile God's word, and to get everybody to have the same mindset of do without will. Because that is the satanic mindset, and it comes in the name of love. It comes in the name of tolerance and acceptance. There's nothing more evil than love, tolerance, and acceptance. I know this because reasons. And that's why their shows with Alan. Have I met Matt Dillahunty in real life? Yeah, I've met Matt multiple times. We've been, uh, one time we spoke at the same convention, which was fun. We ended up having like lunch and hanging out in his hotel room for a while. Me and Jake and some other people who were speakers. Um, yeah, I've met Matt. Alan, right? Modern. We can defile the Bible this weekend, says Bah. <laughs> I do have Bibles with holes in them. So we could, like, stick things through the hole and then stick those things elsewhere. That'd be pretty defiling. <laughs> oh, God. Even for me, that was a little far. Family, gay character. Will and Grace, gay character. Reality shows like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Any of those reality shows, whether it's Project Runway or one of those shows where a woman's buying a wedding dress or America's Next Top Model, Right? Gay character, gay character, gay character. Or you can go down to the list to the real world. Does he want a... Uh, <laughs> is that character from um, America's Next Top Model? Uh, I, I feel like asking for like a fashion design show or a modeling show with no gay characters is pretty unrealistic. <laughs> Let me put it that way. The television show, The Real, will always have to... Daddy Sume says, Hannah, you have just fulfilled my fantasy. I love you. Oh, God. ...have a gay character on cast. This is just to bring acceptance through repetition. So that 50 years ago, this stuff would not be normal. People wouldn't be accepting of, of this. And I'm not... I'm, this isn't bashing anybody who is gay. Okay? It It is. It is, for sure. <laughs> okay? This isn't wishing hate or, or harm on them. And I mean that seriously. I don't wish hate or harm on them. Daddy Sume says, usually it's more like, oh, God, but that works too. Oh, God. Uh, look, call, it is. If you're saying, I, I, it's fine for gay people to exist. I just want the public square to pretend they don't and never show them in media ever. Then you do wish harm on gay people. You want LGBT people to be marginalized and act like they don't exist at best. <laughs> that is harmful. But you see a huge rise in the last 20 years and how many people, it's almost like every other person you see or meet is gay. And that's because <laughs> of the mind control. It's not because all of a sudden people are brave to come out of the closet. It's because. It, it is. It's because it's become more socially acceptable. So more people are okay with coming out. 
of the the typical average estimates i see based on polling are between like three to ten percent of the population is lgbt in some way it, the, the estimates vary wildly but i would imagine it's probably around five percent or something like that pyromancer says uh wish i was gay so i could have less in common with call <laughs> repetition and the indoctrinating with these characters they make these characters funny they make they sexualize these characters this is all part of repetition and mind control and they do it in cartoons as well we saw beauty and the beast right they rolled out the gay character in the new beauty and the beast movie gustan or somebody or his friend right to movies like stork <laughs> oh god sausage party bear in mind that the the gay baiting in beauty and the beast amounted to one scene in the movie where uh lefou dances with a, a guy and that's it that's the whole thing they don't even kiss you know uh the list goes on and on as they start implanting these characters in cartoons so that children automatically think that this is normal behavior and it's normal Right, when in fact it is a form of mind control. And then you can look at the trans agenda, which is never, you know, this is picked up beyond words right now, right? It's like, I mean, 10 years ago, this would have been insane. My agenda is to live my life without getting harassed. That'd be great. And now it's like, if you, if you speak again, you know, they want to suddenly, if they can't pee in the bathroom, they want to pee in your hateful person. Yes. And all this stuff and everybody's on board. But look at all the seeds that have been done with the, the trans agenda from almost every person in Hollywood cross-dressing, whether it's on Saturday Night Live and it's... The, <laughs> the idea that he thinks the old joke of, haha, isn't it funny to see a man dressed like a woman is somehow pro-trans and not the opposite of that is very funny that he doesn't even understand that like a lot of trans people don't like jokes like this specifically because it gives people the idea that haha isn't it funny when someone who doesn't necessarily look feminine is wearing women's clothes like that's not a pro trans thing <laughs> jesus the rock or Derek jeter to movies like white chicks to tv shows like vanderpump rules which every season constantly pushes you know the pride parade the pride parade the guys are always cross-dressing Right? Okay. Because these guys are being paid to push a narrative, to push an agenda. They all are. They're all on board. They know what the goal, you know, this is what they do at Bohemian Grove for people who wonder, what is Bohemian Grove? What do they do with these freak meetings? Yeah. Do they perform all these sexual deviant acts? Yeah. Do they probably per perform ritual killing? What do you think the minimum is for a call for an uprising to deem a sexual act like depraved? Like, is he strictly face-to-face -face missionary, PIV? and no touching the clitoris like like is that like his line and anything different than that is like <laughs> that's deviant all these deviant acts feelings yeah but the goal of isn't to just go up there and kill and and perform because yeah, they do this stuff on a on a routine basis according to the satanic calendar and all these other dates and and moons and full moons and blood moons and all that stuff but they <laughs> gotta do it through the sheet that's good Pyromancer, making eye contact with your partner is pretty deviant. <laughs> they go up there and they socialize. They have meetings about what the agendas are going to be. And it gets pushed down. The people, if you saw the people who went to Bohemian Grove or Bilderberg, you would be like, I don't know who any of these people are. Where's Obama? Where's Trump? Where are the big names? They don't need to be there because it's the editors. It's the producers of these shows or the, you know, the guys who are. I think Justin Timberlake could pull this off. <laughs> Surprisingly. It looks pretty good. Or <laughs> at the top, the COOs of, of networks like Bravo, etc. They get the orders. Okay, this is what you, you got to push this in each show, right? Push the LGP. And they find a way to fit it in. They give the orders down to the producer. They tell them, okay, we're going to do an episode of focuses on pride. We're going to do an episode where the guys cross dress. And that's why all these shows have the same thing going on because they're giving you the repetition because they know that the acceptance starts to come through the repetition. You know, you got movies like Tu Wong Fu. I remember in the 80s, movies, <laughs> good movie, it's like just one of the boys, ladybugs subliminally doing it, right? Boy dressing as girl, girl dressing as boy. It's all there. And you see it now, too. Not really. Again, most of those movies aren't about, well, Tu Wong Fu, depending on how you look at it. 
I think they're just called like drag queens in the movie. It's been a while since I've seen it, but like our modern nomenclature around the difference between like drag queens and transgender individuals and stuff is different than it was back in the day. But like, like a lot of like just one of the boys is not about a trans character to my knowledge. I feel like there's some other underlying reason that they end up cross-dressing and I don't remember and that's what makes it cross-dressing, because they're dressing the opposite of their gender identity. Whereas someone who's trans, like myself, like if I wear a typically feminine outfit, it's not really, I mean, people will insultingly call it cross-dressing, but that's not really what that definition means, because I'm dressing with my identified gender. With movies with, that are about civil war, because that's another agenda they push, right? They push blacks versus whites, liberals versus conservatives, right? Civil war, they have, you know, Captain America, civil war. These Avenger movies are constantly talking about this inner civil war. The Purge movies, right? Purge movies are a perfect example of what they want. This stuff is all planted there. All of the shows, you'll be hard-pressed to find one that doesn't have these agendas in it or these characters pushing this in it. Whether the character, you know, the character doesn't have to be on the show going, everybody should be gay and this and that. No, it's having the character there, the acceptance of it the normalizing of it through repetition. And that's why it's there. So share this video. It's just, it's as simple as it gets. It's as easy as it is to figure out. From all the stuff that people talk about, and I get the importance of talking about everything. I try to talk, talk about every topic that I possibly can. Okay, there's people who talk about so many different things, but it all starts with the human mind. Everything starts with your mind, everything, okay? Before the poisoning and the food, the floor and all stuff, it starts with your brain. Because once you unlock that, once you realize that your brain has been programmed to see stuff that doesn't exist, and then you realize the stuff that, you know, I talk about, the colors, the symbols, all that stuff right in front of our faces, them showing it to you almost like they're a gang, does exist. But your brain's been trained not to see it, to shut it off, to be in an alpha state, a sleep state. So once you unlock your mind, once you turn that key, and you start realizing this stuff and you put your pride aside because if you're someone listening and you're not awake yet, put your pride aside. I don't, nobody cares if you have a master's and all that stuff. Oh, you're going to look back and go, well, I wasted 30 years of my life. Well, no, a lot of people care if you, I mean, meh, meh, meh. well, I guess it depends on the field. People care if you have a master's or whatever. <laughs> uh, Pyromancer56 says the irony. Join the club. We all wasted many years of our life, our lives, right? In the school system. Believing in nonsense, striving for things that we couldn't achieve because they, it's all a controlled system, and then realizing that these things are worthless anyway. We've all been there. So put your pride aside, okay? And just realize that it's a waste. It's not saying How about you put your pride aside and recognize that you're not secretly in on some global conspiracy. You're just a conspiracy theorist spouting nonsense on the internet to other mentally unstable people. That'd be great. Think, oh, someone who's a doctor, they don't serve a purpose, or someone who does this doesn't serve a purpose. Of course they do. People have trades who are good at certain things, and there's people who, you know, go to school for, uh, you know, communications for, you know. Get you literally do communications for a living call. It's your job. It's communicating ideas. Other people go to school for it, and guess what? They're actually way better at it than you, so that's weird, huh? Getting their masters in that, and it's like, okay, well, there's not really, what's coming out of that? I don't know, or your marketing and stuff like that. But if you just set your pride aside and realize that we've all been duped, and that it all starts with the most basic form, which is repetition, which is why they get us at a young age in the schools, like I said earlier, they beat it into our head, beat it into our head, beat it into our head, just like a song on the radio, right? Repeat, repeat, repeat. And then you get to a certain age where your brain is, is already fully developed and it's they that's why they stop schooling at that certain age because your brain's developed. It's processed all the bull crap. It's taking it all in. And they know from this point on, it's going to be hard to deprogram you, but you can deprogram yourself. You can. You have to put your pride aside, your ego aside, and understand that this stuff is real. And especially, go, it goes for people listening who might be gay or might be trans, you know? Or, or women out there listening. You know, I'm not against any women. Not, not even close. But you have to realize that they're playing off of your emotion as a woman with the feminist movement. They're playing off your emotion <laughs> as a gay person. And they're trying to... Oh, that's good. That's a good way to get women on your side. Just trust me. They're just... You're so emotional that you're falling for feminism. 
Yikes. To make you push it on to other people. It's not as good of an argument as you seem to think it is. When empower people. When in fact you've been deceived. You're the one who's been deceived through this mind control. So remember that. I hope this was in informative for you. I wish I could have used video clips, but I can't. It takes forever to get them even in the video to upload. They block it over and over. So I figured I would just try to speak as clearly as I can to get the message and the point across. I hope you found this informative. I thank you all for listening to today's show. Share this video with people, and hopefully it'll help wake them up too. God bless all of you and your families. <laughs> Call for an uprising needs some help. But I'm not going to be the one to give it to him. So what are you going to do? How's Daniel Pratt doing? Could you two be a more criminal, anti-freedom, anti-legal company? So once again, not only do they... If only there was a, another word for anti-legal. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe really, really super, super not legal. Someone has to come up with a shorter way to say that. Censor my speech. Unlegal. That's what we'll go with. Unlegal. That sounds right. On their platform and delete yet another channel. What's this? The 50th? Only a slight exaggeration. <laughs> this legal. But now, once again, they shut my channel down and then charge me for YouTube Premium the next month. <laughs> wow. If I ever decide it's worth it to take YouTube to court, I don't have to get them for censoring me. Honestly, please try and sue Google. I want to see it. A comment from we, what, what we a comment from one of his recent vids. Let me take a look. Dan, brother, do you have the link to the vid you said would be up for only 24 hours? YouTube already took down your do not take the jab video before I can search the info. I'm learning to be stoic and centered. These agendas plus censorship plus psyops, etc. fill me with absolute rage. Though I know that's what the demons want. I do hear ya. Go, brother. LMAO. Wow. Sorry, folks. Looks like the YouTube Nazis already got the video. Or their terms of service BS. I'll just get them for fraud. Because they've done it repeatedly. And it's all in their own paperwork. YouTube is a criminal Nazi censorship platform <laughs> for the government. <laughs> they are associated with Google and Alphabet Inc. Yeah. Alphabet, which is the name for Google now. Uh, Google is still the name of the search engine section, but the umbrella corporation that is Google got renamed to Alphabet and then all the other subsidiaries, Google, Gmail, uh, uh, which might be under Google itself, I don't know. But then YouTube is its own branch under Alphabet, yes. That is... Openly associated with the CIA that helped them create Google Earth. <laughs> which we know is to keep people thinking they live on a whirly-twirly spinning space rock. Or it's like a cool tool to look at stuff. Uh, Nippy Knot, thanks for following. Dreaded Buzzkill, thank you for following. I haven't used Google Earth in a while. It's pretty cool, though. Let's take a look. Where should we go? Pyromancer says, It's always good to accuse YouTube of being Nazis and Jewish people at the same time. Let's find that ice wall. <laughs> Come to Pittsburgh? Sure. Okay. 
God, I love Google Earth. Like, I love that now they have the buildings as, like, 3D models, so you can, like, actually look around them. If you download Google Earth, it functions a lot better than this, for the record. But, like, the fact that they have all the buildings 3D modeled is so cool. Oopsie. But it runs very slowly just through the browser. It's like playing a uh, Sim City game, but it's a real life map. <laughs> it's very cool. The future is now. Anyway, that's Google Earth. It's cool. And YouTube repeated. That's your town? That's weird. My cousin also lives in Pittsburgh. Italy shuts my channels down and then charges me the next month for a YouTube premium membership. That's what a great company YouTube is. And for those asking, why do you pay for... So when I try to show video clips, I don't have to worry about stupid commercials. So when I want to watch a video... I can download it and take it with me in the car. Has he never thought to Google YouTube downloader? Those exist. You don't need YouTube premium for that. Though, go ahead and get YouTube premium and then watch my videos so I make money. And they just continue to defraud me over and over YouTube premium and has over nothing to do again. with your channel, yeah. They don't even know he exists. Keep it up, YouTube. Like I said before, you're building me quite a nice little bankroll. <laughs> that's some delusion, huh? Well, that's what he's up to. It is Photoshop, but it's, it's half... Do I make more from watching VODs on YouTube or here? Uh, for the VODs specifically, probably YouTube. If you have YouTube Premium specifically. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. Watch whatever's easiest for you. If you like Twitch better, that's fine. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris. From New York, uh, Westchester County. It's uh, March 17th, 2021. Well, let's take, for example, planet Earth. It's a planet, right? Yeah. And it revolves a thousand miles per hour. Sure. How many times do I have to do this, guys? I, mean, really. I don't know, probably until you either die or you figure out that you're wrong. Daddy Sume says, I prefer here because I can make Hannah say things like, Ooh, ooh Daddy is my favorite furry. The comments below are, are just unbelievably the most stupid comments that I've ever seen in my entire life. And that's why I know they're paid to do this. But anyway, you know, it's a planet revolving at a thousand miles per hour. In a solar system that's also revolving at some sort of speed what's ever made up. On the sun, hold up, get that pumpkin for you. <laughs> <clears throat> this is our sun. Did I see the video of his wife yelling at him? Yeah. Yeah, my daughter drew Someone this. Someone on Jake's Twitter made you aware of this? Let me see. Yeah, I, it's a Flat Earth album. I don't want to play it because I think he'll strike me, but it's kind of funny. When I watched, at least I couldn't tell if he was serious or not. Who knows? Well, amazingly enough, it kind of petrified itself. But anyway, this is the sun traveling in the universe and everything is revolving around it. But yeah. yet, all well, the stars are not moving. <laughs> That's a sh they are, but like the stars that are closest to us, that are most prominent to your naked eye, for instance, um, 
they're moving in the Milky Way along with us. We're all revolving around the center of the galaxy. These things are also so far away that any apparent motion is going to happen very, very, very slowly. Probably not even within your lifetime. It just takes so long and it's so far away. Shame, isn't it? Any news on the friends Nathan abandoned? This is the video that the friend posted after Nathan allegedly took their took the money and ran. In a world where I'm being heavily censored, my boy Bob from Glowbusters, who's obviously a legend, has agreed to let me use his backup channel. So go subscribe to Glowbusters 2 and Glowbusters Activism on YouTube so that you can keep up with the coming content and live streams from the tour. Um, which it gets it on YouTube. You can subscribe to that, but it's being heavily censored and I'm getting strikes before the first ones even get resolved. Go follow Wits It Gets It on DLive, Wits It Gets It on Twitch, Wits It Gets It on Instagram so you can keep up with all of the updates to the tour. We're in Florida right now. If you're in the area and you'd like to link up, feel free to email T S I T at you gotta stand behind the people that are fighting in the face of censorship. So shout out to Bob, what a legend, letting me use his channels. We're gonna probably create a masquerade tour YouTube channel also. We'll link up, we're gonna set up some meetups. That's just him talking about it. There was a different video from somewhere else that is him asking for money from people, though, because Nathan took their money. Allegedly. That is a shame. They're not moving. At all. The pumpkin? Yeah, you set it on a table. <sighs> on a I planet. I by this. But I'm here talking to you. I'm not moving. I'm not... But you are? Motion is relativistic, okay? There is no such thing as absolute motion. You're moving in the sense that you are on Earth and the Earth is moving relative to other things in the universe. The sun, the center of the Milky Way galaxy, other stars and planets that are out there. But, like... You don't necessarily feel it because, again, that motion is all relative. What you feel, if you feel something moving, is is the momentum or acceleration or negative acceleration. You don't feel absolute motion because it doesn't exist. What you feel is changes in inertia and speed. Upside down, am I? Are you? What you feel are changes in speed, which you can feel because of inertia. Like, if you're... If a train is at a stop and then all of a sudden it lurches forward, you feel that because because of inertia, which is a property of matter, as we learned from the Bill Nye theme song, basically says that an object in motion stays at motion, an object at rest stays at rest. So when you're at rest, you feel it when something propels you forward because innately, due to physics, you're 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 at rest relative to the train and therefore it's noticeable when you move. I guess possible you might be. I guess you must be upside down in China. If no, no one on the Earth who's standing upright is upside down because gravity and down is defined as being towards the center of the Earth. So to us, the center of the Earth is down that direction. For someone on the other side of the planet, it's the other direction because they're on the other side of it and it's a sphere. If you're viewing this video. There is no universal up and down in space. We're talking again about relative direction here. Does that make any sense at all to you? It doesn't. It's not making any sense. Because it doesn't exist. We live in a flat plane. Flat plane. How could you comprehend that somebody below me right now exists on some sort of imaginary planet held in with gravity? Because gravity has been demonstrated in numerable times. We understand that gravity is a force that exists, whether you understand it or not. We've only dug down eight, uh, uh, I'm sorry, somebody already schooled me on this, 7.5 miles here. But yet, you're given all of these photos, you're given all of these diagrams, you're given all of this shit. And then, 
you've got planets up there that they think they know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> planets. Let's talk about a planet. How does a planet actually exist? How Gravity. Gravity is often the answer with Flat Earth's questions. Which is why many of them have chosen not to believe in gravity, because it's the answer to so many of the things that make them believe the Earth is flat. Does it? You know how it exists? It's round, and it's got water around it. Yes. Yeah. Our planet does, at least, yes. Alright, so... You... Oh god, yes. Please pick up a small ball and dump water on it. Please. Please do it. We have a glass. Well, it's not a glass. It's... it's a cup. The word you're thinking of is cup. Water seeks to its level, which is flat. You see that? Right. But level on a ball, if the ball is big enough to have a gravitational pull uh, relative to the other things around it that's holding water to it, then level is going to be as close to the center of the ball as it can get. Flat. Water seeks the lowest point, the lowest point being the center of the Earth, or as close to it as they can get because of physical barriers. It, it seeks its level. There's no way a planet could actually exist. It's impossible. There's no way that a planet could actually exist. It's impossible. You best start believing in planets. You're on one. Mix gothy queer with 115 bits says snipe. It's preposterous. Doesn't make any sense. How nobody knows how gravity works. You don't know how gravity works. Therefore, you think no one does. Single... He's awfully quiet. Gee, I wonder if his wife is home. It's always true. He's so loud when he's in his car. And then when he does things in his kitchen, he's so quiet. Because remember that time his wife yelled at him about it? Let's look at that. That's one of my favorite videos about Flat Earth. And I can't believe he uploaded it. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Um, well, This same... kitchen looks so much bigger from this camera angle, too, by the way. Same day, same time. This is not to scale, of course. When I grew up, the solar system was stationary. All right, honey, come on. The sun was standing. Why don't you stop this bullshit? I love you. Give me like five minutes. No, you've had the, all morning, and I'm just freezing, and I'm hungry, and I'm. Just... <laughs> I don't know why he uploaded this. It's his most popular video, though. This has two hundred thousand views. <laughs> Towing twenty four says, and this is why his wife hates flat Earth bullshit. He always spilling stuff. Nereus Crowhill says, Hannah, if we funded a bunch of flat earthers to go on the vomit comet to observe gravity, do you think that would shut these guys up? Follow-up questions. What would it take to get such people to actually go along with science? No, because then they'd say, see, we didn't go up in space and we felt like we were in zero gravity, so it's all fake. Because they wouldn't understand the concept that is being illustrated to them about relativistic motion and how orbit is zero gravity because you're constantly falling towards the earth but always miss it because that's how orbits work. Puka the Duka with 100 bits says, why would he upload that? Attention. Let's watch that one more time. When I grew up, the solar system was stationary. All right, honey, come on. The sun was standing. Why don't you stop this bullshit? I love you.
Didn't you give me like five minutes? No, you've had the, all morning, and I'm just freezing, and I'm hungry, and I'm trying to stop in the house. <laughs> well, scientists can tell us how it works. But yet you're given all these beautiful photos of this beautiful marble. It's sad, guys. It really is. I hope you uh, enjoyed the uh, previous videos that I posted. Yes, I found that 1984 commercial. That really it was nice. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, download that little video. I mean, uh, <clears throat> that app that uh, David Weiss has. He can't even convince and, his uh, wife, and he thinks it. he can I convince guess, his viewers. Um, I thank you for subbing. I thank you for viewing my videos and making me party. Oh, CC. Poor CC. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> A little afraid for our lives when we were pulled over, so. Seen over here on the left. Here's Dan Newhouse. Here's the guy that won. At some points, there was like twelve candidates in this race, but there was there was like five or six major. Oh, Gavin CM is talking about the time he ran for Congress and lost. Contenders spending lots of money. Look at look at look at this. Here's the guy. This is this is new. Towing twenty four says someone get to someone needs to find well his wife's time, Facebook his and snitch tag all this to her. <laughs> always something like, well, let's switch that camera again. I'm not gonna watch this whole video. You guys can go look for these videos, uh, and those of you that follow my. But, but that's not the point. Okay. That's probably good for the evening. Oh, good. <laughs> Altered Rin is watching. <laughs> the vegan teacher. Perfect. We need to find a new home for that goatee. <sighs> All right, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Enjoy Altered Rin's stream. I got some other stuff to do. So I'll see you guys. Uh, if you're a Patreon, I will see you tomorrow because tomorrow is the third Sunday of the month, meaning patron-only live stream. I might also do some other kind of stream after or before or something, but uh, come check out the patron-only stream if you are a Patreon Check out your, uh, or keep an eye out for the patron-only post on Patreon, and I'll message everyone with sort of a, a, what's the word, stock message, a form letter that'll give you guys the link to the video when it's ready to go. So we'll hang out and watch videos and stuff, but it'll just be with a smaller group of people. If you want, um, there's still, I think, time to go and join my Patreon. There's a link below in my channel information. It's just patreon.com slash Hannah Reloaded. Um, any donation gets you into the patron live show if you would like. It's a lot of fun. So I will see you guys later. Chat's always valid. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>